Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the evidence of things you can't see with your physical eye. So why not go ahead and just be daring? We dare to have the boldness, the courage, and the confidence of free access. I love what the Amplified Bible says, an unreserved approach to God. It's wind versus word. It's what you feel versus what you know. It's what you've been through versus what he did for you. Which one is going to win? The wind or the word? And God doesn't want you to have little faith. He wants you to have big faith. And he wants you to ask him for and believe for things that your mind cannot get in agreement with. God's people live by faith. And in the faith world, it is done. In the faith world, we don't wait till the game is over. We start praising the Lord before the thing is ever complete because God said faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Welcome. We are so glad to have you with us today for the faith building event. We have so many friends and partners already coming together for a great day. In fact, I just got word that we have uh, people watching from 127 countries and all 50 states in the U.S. We are going to have a wonderful time building our faith today. So I'm Isaiah Shook here with Cassidy Foy. We got some wonderful ministry moderators here that are chatting with you right now as well. Yes, we are so excited about everything God is going to do today. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We want to know where you're watching from, so let us know in the chat. Also, in the chat on your viewing page, you'll find a link to give and submit your prayer request because at the end of today's event, my mom, Terry, and some of our guest ministers will be laying hands on those requests and praying in agreement over your gifts. That's right. You know, I want to encourage you to stir up your expectation to receive what you need today for your breakthrough. Uh, you're going to hear a word in due season. Set your heart to receive, you know, and be sure to get those prayer requests sent in. There's still time to have them uh, received so they can be prayed over. Uh, yeah, click that prayer request button. And yeah, I just want you to know our expectation is so high to see what God's going to do in your life. I also want to encourage you to invite someone to log in, watch today, share this with a friend as we get started. Yeah, yeah, help us get the word out. And so, and now, let's go to the founder of Terry Savelle Foy Ministries. She's a best-selling author, new books coming out soon. Yes. A host of the Live Your Dreams television broadcast. She's a podcaster, conference speaker, so much more. Please welcome Terry Savelle Foy. Savelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Welcome to the second faith building event. You know, we're going to build your faith for whatever you're dreaming about, praying about, and it looks impossible. You know, Jesse DePlanis says, it takes a dream to wake up your faith, but it takes faith to wake up your dream. So we're going to do both today. You know, I heard someone talk about the combination to a lot, and they said, being successful is like knowing the combination. It doesn't matter if you're 16 or 65, male or female, French or American. If you know the combination, the lock has to open. Well, today, we're going to learn the combination to build your faith to achieve impossible-looking dreams. And I believe with all my heart, you're watching by divine appointment. God is going to do something so big in your heart to get your faith built up. You know, you may feel stuck in a situation. Nothing has improved. Nothing's changing. You need to get ready because I believe things are going to be accelerated. That you're going to pay off debts that felt like they would take a lifetime. You're going to have the favor of God to buy your dream house, to buy real estate. You're going to meet the right people and be in the right places. And I believe the rest of this year can still be the best of this year if you'll have faith, right? In fact, did you know in retail, let's just pretend that this is a little wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> in retail, 20 to 40% of all sales revenue happens in the last 45 days of the year. In fact, in sports, in the NFL, on average, there are more points scored in the final two minutes of the game than all points scored throughout the entire game. Am I right, Garrett? <laughs> what am I saying? Let's finish strong. You know, I've shared this many times of how the Bible says that when you get born again, 
you are given the measure of faith, which I love my new measuring here. <laughs> What's this called? Tape measure? Yeah, I love this. But you know, when you're born again, we're all given the same measure of faith. It's just like muscles. When we're born, we're all given the same amount of muscles. So you might say, well, then... What's the difference in this girl's muscles? This is four-time winner Miss Olympia. <laughs> What's the difference in her and me? Well, she's wearing a sequin bikini, and I'm not. But <laughs> no, but the thing is, she has developed her muscles to a greater degree so she can handle more weight. Well, it's the same with faith. You see some people believing for millions of dollars, and others are believing for groceries. What's the difference? One has just built their faith to a greater degree so they can believe for more. So how do we get Miss Olympia-sized faith? Well, you just happen to have a prop. Faith comes by hearing <laughs> and hearing by the Word of God. So whoever has your ear has your faith. What you consume, you become. So when you listen to these messages tonight, it's like a workout for your spirit. I mean, these people know what they're talking about. And when you finish this event, you might want to measure your biceps because your faith is going to be so good. You're going to be swole is what I'm saying. So, <laughs> Okay, I want to explain how this whole event came about. First, I want to ask you real quick, are you believing for a house, land, offices, real estate, some type of title deed? Let us know in the comments. Just type the word title deed if this applies to you. Second question is, are you believing specifically to be debt free, to pay off your house or land or debt in general? If so, write in the comments, debt freedom. You know, 96% told me on Instagram that they were believing for one of these. So here's why I ask. For seven and a half years, I wanted to own offices. But then last year, God led me to this scripture, Hebrews 11, 1. That's a famous scripture that says, um, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Well, a friend of mine said, check out the Amplified Version. So I checked it out and it says, now faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of things hoped for. Well, when I read that, I mean, I took that scripture to heart. And we started declaring every single week as a team, Hebrews 11, 1. See, God isn't obligated to do what you say, but he is obligated to do what he said. Well, then we started sowing seed of 11-1. Whether it was $1,101, 11100 we said, Lord, we're attaching our faith to Hebrews 11-1. That our faith will produce the title deed for our offices. Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that once we got serious about our faith building, after seven and a half years of renting, God blessed us with the most beautiful offices on the lake. And not just any old space, the most beautiful building on the lake. Three-story headquarters. Our faith produced the title deed. And I believe the same is going to happen for you. So that's why last year the Lord told me to have this faith building event. Kind of like a play on words, you know, faith for your building. <laughs> and um, we had 133 nations watching, joining their faith with ours. But the most remarkable thing is the testimonies we received of people, some of them are here in the audience, getting their title deeds, dream houses given to them, debts paid off. I mean, remarkable things happen. So I thought this was just a one-time event, but I felt in my heart I was supposed to do it again this year. Then the Lord began to reveal to me just one by one the children of the pioneers, that that's who I was supposed to invite because their dads knew how to have like skyscraper faith. You know, Michael Todd said, you can't have sky, you can't build a skyscraper size vision on fixer upper faith. <laughs> he said, you won't experience mansion size miracles with porta potty principles. <laughs> so let me just tell you the lineup tonight. Listen to who we have. Oral Roberts built a hospital and a university by faith. And we have his son Richard with us tonight. Mm. Fred Price built a dome for a church in South Central LA when nobody did that. It's called the Faith Dome. His son Fred Jr. is here today. John Osteen started his church in an abandoned feed store, but by faith, he built an 8,000 seat sanctuary. And his daughter Lisa is here today. 
Then we have two more bonuses. Bill Winston, I don't know who his dad is, but <laughs> the man has such big faith. He bought a bank, a shopping center, all kinds of properties by faith. We asked him to teach us, how do we get faith like that? Oh, and we have a bonus download for you and other guests like Kenneth Hagen's daughter, Pat Harrison, plus scriptures to declare for your free download. But here's how we're going to close this event in such a powerful way that you don't want to miss. Kenneth Copeland's daughter and son-in-law, George and Terry Pearson, who are like family to me, they're going to be joining me live here tonight to inspire you, but to pray over your dreams and your seed. Let me tell you why I asked them. First, Kenneth Copeland, he taught the church, he taught us that you can live debt-free, that it's possible and it's God's will. Well, George has gotten such a revelation on that. In fact, he got that when he was the CEO for Kenneth Copeland Ministries and they were faced with a $6 million TV bill that they had no way to pay. He got so full of God's will concerning debt freedom. And what they thought was going to take years, they paid off within six months. And then Terry has such an anointing for prayer. My goodness, she, she makes my eyelash glue just peel right off. <laughs> so I just thought, what if they came here and joined me live to lay hands on your dream and your seed for your title deed, your debt freedom? That would be so powerful. And they said yes. So get ready. There is power in prayer and there is multiplied power when we come together and agree. So I heard T.D. Jake say this. He said, when you look out into a field and you see a bulldozer, that's what this is? A bulldozer. (laughs) I thought this was a dump truck. but And you see, you know, a concrete mixer. You see all these big things. He said, you know they aren't building a chicken coop. He said, you know, something big is about to go up. Well, I brought in the bulldozers today to build skyscraper faith in you. So let's kick it off with the son of Oral Roberts and pretty much family to me. Please welcome Dr. Richard Roberts. Hi, everyone. I'm Richard Roberts, and I am so delighted to be a part of this event. Terry, thank you so much for this invitation. I'm excited about being here and having this opportunity to share. And you know, Terry, you asked me to talk particularly about my dad, Earl Roberts. And uh, you remind me a lot of him, and he reminds me a lot of you. Because he was unconventional, and you are unconventional. Just about everything you do is unconventional. And just about everything my father Earl Roberts did was very unconventional too. In fact, he told me that you have to be unconventional to be in the ministry. And he taught me how to be flexible. He taught me how to be unconventional in order to reach people. And he said, you've got to reach people where they are, not where you think they are, but where they really are, where people truly are. And I remember, uh, you see this picture behind me. (laughs) I grew up in in tent crusades like this. We would always sit over on this side, uh, over on the front row, and I would hear him preach and, and see him give an altar call like he's giving here, people giving their hearts to the Lord, just sitting on the edge of my seat, waiting for him to begin to pray for the sick. Because many times he would call me up and I could stand by his side. (laughs) <laughs> and on the last day of the crusade, if you had not yet received prayer, he would lay hands on you and pray and he would walk prayer lines and I would walk those prayer lines with him. And many times I'd hold his coat or have a, a cup of water for him. And sometimes for several hours uh, praying over people in line. Thank God for those days. Those days are what helped form my life. And I remember uh, as a teenager, he was going back on national television in prime time programs, prime time specials. He was gonna bring on Hollywood guests in order to gain an audience to preach the gospel. And he wanted me to be his soloist. He wanted me to be uh, the the singer on the program. And, And oftentimes I would sing with those people that came on the program. I got to sing with people like Aretha Franklin and uh, Johnny Cash and a host of others that came on our program. And he used those people to get an audience so he could preach the gospel. He was very unconventional. Literally in television, he brought the tent right into people's homes. He gave people a front row seat to the miracle power of God. My dad taught me how to pray. 
He told me that prayer is the key that unlocks the throne of God's mercy. He said prayer is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. It's you talking to God and God talking to you. <laughs> I can hear him saying, Richard, God is a talking God. And when you talk to him, he will talk back to you. And uh, there was much prayer that went on in our home. And that's where I really learned about prayer. And also walking those prayer lines, I, I saw him pray for the sick. I saw how he laid hands on people. I saw the compassion of God coming out of him. And he once told me that compassion is a, a, an irresistible urge to reach in and take hold of the problem and pull it out. It's different than sympathy. Sympathy says, I'm so sorry. I wish I could help. But compassion's different. Compassion wants to get a hold of the problem and pull it out. That was Oral Roberts, that compassion, that anointing was on him. And I, I grew up watching that. And so much of that has come into my life because of my experiences with him. He taught me how important it is to make the main thing the main thing. <laughs> You're married to principles, not methods. Times change, people change. God gives you new and innovative ways of doing things. And a good example are the three main tenets of the ministry that God gave him. Uh, the first, of course, were the phrases that God gave him. God gave him the phrase, seed faith which in those days was highly, highly criticized. And I remember when he wrote the book, The Miracle of Seed Faith, he wrote it by hand on a yellow legal pad and he would give it to me and I would type it for him and I'd give it back to him and he would change it all up and give it back to me and I'd type it again and I'd give it back to him and he'd change it again and I'd type it again. I think by the time I'd typed it about 15 times, I knew the book as well as he did. But that phrase, seed faith, is something that he introduced to the world. And he was the one who began to say, God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. And those were times when many people did not understand that God is a good God. He's not a bad God. He, he's not up in heaven waiting for you to make a mistake. He's not up in heaven waiting to pour out his wrath upon you and say, I, I knew you were no good. I, I knew I couldn't count on you. No, he would say, God is a good God and the devil is a bad devil. And he would say, Jesus came to take off you what the devil put on, to take out of you what the devil put in, to put back in you what the devil took out and to put back on you what the devil took off. And he would say, God is a good God. He'd have the people stand and say, God is a good God. And then, I remember when I was a boy, uh, we were in uh, Miami, Florida, and my dad had a custom of renting two hotel rooms uh, when, uh, with an adjoining door when my mother and, our, and, and, and we children were along. And at three o'clock in the afternoon, he would close himself off in one of the rooms and we'd have to go into the other room. And uh, he would uh, take a short nap and, uh, and then awaken and get his Bible and study and be prepared for the evening service. And so he laid down to take a nap and fell asleep. We were in the other room. <laughs> and when all of a sudden he was awakened by a hand on his shoulder. He thought it was my mother, but it wasn't. It was the Lord. The Lord walked into his room and said, Earl Roberts, expect a miracle. <laughs> expect a new miracle every day. And he began to say, expect a miracle, expect a miracle. Wherever you go, whatever you do, expect the spontaneous, supernatural outpouring of God. Expect a miracle. And he began to say it everywhere. Well, we hear it today, but I was there when it started. And then <laughs> God gave him the phrase, something good is going to happen to you. And he would come on our television programs saying, hello, I'm Royal Roberts. Something good is going to happen to you. It was unconventional. He did unconventional things like that. And you know, Terry, your family, growing up in your family and me growing up in my family, four different generations. And we've been friends and, and co-laborers in the gospel for all these years. Everything that you do is unconventional. Everything that my father did and what he taught me to do is unconventional, it's different. And how I praise God for it. You know, and I remember when my dad prayed over you. And I, that's one of the first times I began hearing him say, I'm coming into an agreement with you, Terry, and I'm not coming out of this agreement, but I am believing God to touch you and heal you and deliver you and to set you free. Before my dad went to heaven, he reached over and put his hand on me and said, son, there are three things you must never allow to die. 
He said, never allow the healing ministry to die. Never allow praying in tongues and interpreting back the way the Apostle Paul taught in 1 Corinthians 14 to die. And never allow the principles of seed faith to die. I thank God for those principles, the principles of healing, that Jesus is a healing Jesus, that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what He did in Bible days, He's still doing these days. And Terry, I see you doing that. And the message of seed faith, the fact that what you sow will come back to you. The world says, you know, uh, 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 what goes around comes around. <laughs> well, that's seed faith. What you put in is what you get out. When you sow, you have a Bible right to expect God to use it for His glory and multiply it back in ways you need it most. And then, of course, praying in the Spirit. He taught me about praying in the Spirit, that you can pray in tongues and you can join in to the Holy Spirit's prayer because the Holy Spirit is in every born again believer. In fact, you can't even get saved without the Holy Spirit coming in. He said you can tap into his prayer, you can pray in tongues as Paul said, and then you can stop and pray in English. And when you do, you're gonna get new ideas, new insights, new concepts, and new and innovative ways of doing things like you never dreamed possible. That's unconventional, Terry. And what you're doing is unconventional. This event you're doing is unconventional. And you're doing what my dad did. You're touching people where they are, but not leaving them there. You're taking them to a new level. And how I thank God for this opportunity. Let me pray for all of you. It's not by might, and it's certainly not by power, but it's by the authority given us in the name of Jesus that I pray. And I pray over each one of you, no matter what it is that you're facing. I come against every sickness, every disease, every fear, every doubt. I come against anything and everything that would come against you and try to separate you from your health, try to separate you from your relationship with God. In the authority of Jesus' name, I rebuke it. I command it to come out. I take authority over it. And I expect a miracle for you. I pray for God's richest blessings upon your life. I pray that as you make your life a seed that you sow unto the Lord, that He will use you, He will bless you, and He'll multiply it back to you as His Word says, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I pray this in the authority of Jesus' name, and I expect a miracle. And let me say it, I believe something good is going to happen to you. God bless each and every one of you. Terry, God bless you. Rodney, your whole family. Wow. That was priceless, wasn't it? I think we should put in the comments, I expect a miracle. Get your expectations up. You know, you're gonna get in life exactly what you expect. I'm expecting to be debt free, how about you? Are you expecting your house, your land, your baby, your spouse, kind of rhymes, <laughs> your breakthrough? Then let Jesus see your faith. And did I hear that right? Did he kind of compare me to Oral Roberts? <laughs> I do not know how to respond to that. So maybe I should have icing under the big tent or something. <laughs> but you know, I'm just, I'm speechless about that. But that was so good. What Dr. Richard Roberts learned watching his dad marked him for life. So I wanna say this real quick, as you're listening to these messages today, first of all, get clear on what you want. You know, this is a faith building event, but before anything is built, you must have a blueprint, you know, a vision for what you want. What is your vision right now? Is it to have a house, land, real estate, to pay off your debts? Get it in writing and send it to us so we can pray over it before the event ends. And then sow a seed for it. It's the miracle of seed faith. So where you want to go, right? I want you to hear this powerful testimony from Parrish Stone and let it inspire your faith to just say, I am next. Watch this. My husband and I um, are partners with Terry. We have been partnering with Terry for I believe four, net, four years now we've been partners. We had never wanted to buy a house or own a house. We were renting and, and, and traveling in ministry and it just never was something on our heart. But Terry stirred that up in me 
And so I was like, you know, I do want a house. I want to own my own home and I want, that's something that I desire. My kids are at an age where it's the appropriate time for that. And I just felt like ministry wise, it was like the right choice. So I just, I just began to do what I knew to do, which was to believe God, to declare were the word of God that pertains to this specifically and to just put it on my vision board and to start ta- like speaking it out daily, you know, and doing those things. And so the day of the faith building event, um, I was obviously watching it and I knew I needed to sew into it right then into that word when Kenneth Copeland was speaking about the title deed and having it in hand, and I just knew I needed to sow right then. And so Casey and I agreed together on a certain amount to sow towards the Hebrews 11 one seed, which we had actually already done before, but I felt like this was that moment. You know, we were sowing into that moment. So fast forward like, so that was mid-November. Fast forward to January, like first week of January. So this is only like a couple of weeks we went out to look at a house that we were maybe looking at buying and everything was falling into place. So when we met with the landlord of the home, we actually knew them and they were also Christians. So that's already cool because I feel like I'm going to have peace in this situation because we're all on the same page. We all love Jesus. They were like, can we have a moment with you by ourselves? We actually got some really amazing news that we want to share with you. They said that someone had reached out anonymously that wanted to pay wanted to pay off our house for us. And it was, a dream, a miracle that God did. And so grateful for Terry and just her vision to inspire. I would not partner with anybody else before her. Like seriously, like I just feel like my partnership had had prepared me. If this is the only way I can encourage someone to say, if God's telling you to sow, sow. If God's telling you to fast, fast. If God's telling you to um, give into this faith building event or to just put your faith out there, write a petition and declare it. Whatever it is, just do what God says to do because He's faithful. Wow, what an amazing testimony. When we hear stories like this here at the ministry, we like to say, we're next. That's right. So let this testimony inspire you that God can do things that you could never make happen in your own power. And I love how Parrish said, Parrish said that her and Casey's partnership with this ministry prepared them to receive their new home completely paid for. Yeah, you know, when you become a partner with the ministry, you put a spiritual law into place that will take your life to a whole new level. I heard of say a whole nother level. Probably <laughs> yes. shouldn't do it like that again, though. But you know, in the Bible, the Apostle Paul talks about it's in Philippians that when you become a partner with the ministry, you become a partaker of that grace. And that just means that the gift and anointing that's on a ministry, it comes on your life as well. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I want that anointing of other ministries on my life. So whether you're taking a step of faith to sow today or to partner as a monthly giver with this ministry, you are positioning yourself for breakthroughs and increase. You're also helping us reach people all over the world with a message of faith, hope and vision found in Jesus. So click the donate button now, or if you're watching the replay, click the donate link in the description. And if you're in the US, you can also text TSFM event to 28950, or you can call the number 877-661-8736. I also, I just looked on the website and wrote down a few of our givers. We have Lori from Canada, who just gave $111. Thank you, Lori. We have Nina from Texas, who just gave $300. And Letitia from Virginia, who just gave $25. Yeah, that's wonderful. Get that those seeds sown. And again, at the end of the program, uh, Terry and uh, Pastors George and Terry are going to pray over your giving and your prayer requests. Um, I want to say something I think was really important about what Parrish said in her video and her testimony that, you know, they had given before uh, the faith building event, Hebrews 11, one kind of motivated faith gift. But during the faith building event, just really felt prompted in their heart that, no, that was a moment to give again. Mm-hmm. 
And so maybe you've already given, but you know, as you're watching, the Holy Spirit is stirring something up on the inside of you and prompting you to give during the faith building. Just encourage you to do it because I believe the Lord is setting you up to experience a major blessing because of that. So you still have time to get those seeds planted and prayer requests sent in. You can click the donate button um, on the screen if you're watching the replay. Click the donate link, and of course, in the U.S., text TSFM event two eight nine five zero or call us. 877-661-8736. Yes, so let's send it back to my mom in the studio. Yay, okay. Our next guest is the son of one of the greatest faith teachers the world ever saw, Dr. Fred Price. You know, when I was a little girl, he stayed at our house and I just thought he had the coolest hair. It was like a perfect little afro. It was so amazing. <laughs> But God dropped a dream in his heart back in the 80s to build a dome, a church in South Central LA with no money. I want you to know that vision always comes before provision. And he built this massive faith dome. So I want you to help me welcome his son, the amazing pastor of Crenshaw Christian Center, Dr. Frederick Price Jr. Hello, I'm Pastor Frederick Price Jr. And it is an honor and privilege to be with you all on this occasion. I want to say thank you to Terry Savelle Foy and Terry Savelle Foy Ministries uh, for the opportunity and privilege to be able to share some things that I learned from my father, uh, the great apostle Frederick Casey Price, on the subject of how to pray in faith. Mark eleven twenty four 24 is the prayer of faith. And I don't know a better teacher on the prayer of faith than my father. Mark 11, 24. Now, of course, we learn in the 23rd verse, actually in the 22nd verse, Jesus says, have faith in God. And, and the reason why he says this is because the disciples were in awe that the fig tree that he cursed had withered up and died. Rabbi, look, the tree you cursed, it's no more. Jesus doesn't say... I know, right? Aren't you impressed with what I did? No, that's not. That wasn't his response. He says, have faith in God. I mean, that sounds to me like Jesus is saying, I, I see that you're thoroughly impressed with what I did, but if you have faith in God, you can do similar things. You too could speak to trees or speak to mountains. So then he says in the 23rd verse, whoever says to this mountain, be removed to be cast into the sea. And you don't doubt in your heart. You'll have what you say. Then right there in that 24th verse, there it is, the prayer of faith, which reads, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, or, or whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. James 5.15 makes mention of this prayer of faith. It says the prayer of faith will, will heal the sick or save the sick. The Word of God is multi-layered, it's manifold, so I take that to mean a few things. On one hand... The prayer of faith will save the spiritually sick. Unsaved people are spiritually sick, whether they realize it or not. And the prayer of faith can get them saved. The prayer of faith will heal the spiritually sick, will bring them into salvation. But then, but then from a physical standpoint, when pain attacks our body, when sickness and disease tries to creep in, James is also saying the prayer of faith will heal the sick. The prayer of faith will. Then John John follows up in 1 John 5, 14 and 15. What does he say? He says, this is the confidence that we have. Now, remember, faith is the confidence. Faith is the substance. Substance is confidence. John says in, in 1 John 5, 14, 15, he says, this is the confidence that we have. That if we pray according to your will, or, or if we pray and ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I am confident that if I pray according to the will of God, the will of God is the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. So if I pray according to his word, I can be confident that he hears me. Therefore, if I know that he hears me, then I know I have what I've asked of him. I know I have the petitions that I have asked of him. Why? Because I prayed according to his word. And whenever I pray according to his word or according to his will, he hears me. So I can, when I'm praying the prayer of faith, there are other prayers. There's the prayer of consecration and dedication. Not my will, but your will be done. That's not the prayer of faith. There, there's the prayer of agreement. That requires more than one person. 
prayer of binding and loosing, prayer of thanksgiving. We're talking about the prayer of faith. When I pray the prayer of faith, I pray that prayer according to his will. And when I do that, I know he hears me. Since I know that he hears me, I know I have what I've asked of him because what I asked of him was according to his will. So here, here's, here's how it works. Here's the prayer of faith in operation. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask or desire when you pray, we know God's okay with desires. He says, delight yourselves in him. Delight yourselves in the Lord, the psalmist tells us. Psalm 37, 4. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. If I'm a, if I'm a blood-bought, blood-washed believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, it would seem that my desires wouldn't be anything that would go against his word, contrary to his word. Seems like whatever I would desire would be in line with his word. So if I delight myself in him and delight myself in his word, He'll give me the desires of my heart. So God's okay with us having desires. So, so whatever things I desire when I pray or ask when I pray, the Bible says what? Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Okay, let's look at this. He says, whatever things you ask or desire when you pray. Well, when do we pray? Remember the timing of faith. It's always now. Whenever I pray is now. If, 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 I, if I pray in the next five minutes, in the next five minutes, it'll be now. When I prayed yesterday, yesterday was now. Whenever I pray, it's now. So whatever things you ask when you pray. When do I ask? I ask when I pray. When do I pray? Now. That means I ask now. Because the asking is occurring during the praying. And whenever I pray, yesterday, today, or tomorrow, it's going to be now. So I'm asking now. I'm praying now. I'm asking now. Then look at what it says. Believe that you receive them. When do I do that? Now. Now. I pray now, I ask now, and then I believe that I receive it now. Here's the only future part of this prayer. You will have. But the you will have is contingent on me praying now, asking now, and believing that I receive it now. And so Daddy used to always, over and over and over again, he would make sure that people understood. You're not saying that you are healed when you're physically not healed. Is while you're physically sick, your confession or your wording is, I believe I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. Then when the healing manifests, you don't have to believe you're healed anymore. You are healed. But until that happens, I believe I'm healed because I believe according to the word. And, and, and if it's truly a prayer of faith, and I prayed and I know he heard me, then whatever it is that I petitioned God for, I don't have to pray for that again. If I pray for it again, I'm implying God didn't hear me the first time. Maybe I'm implying that I didn't pray according to his will. But if I did pray according to his will, I can be confident he heard me. I don't have to pray for that again, that specific thing again. I just believe I receive it until it manifests. And once it manifests, I'm moving on to the next petition. That's how the prayer of faith works. And, and I would say, once again, of the numerous things that I learned from my father, that these are probably the four things that, that stood out the most. Stood out the most and continue to stand out the most. Thank you so much once again to Terry Savelle Foy and Terry Savelle Foy Ministries for this opportunity to share with you what I learned from my father. Not just my earthly father, but my spiritual father, my father in the faith, Apostle Frederick Casey Price. I was blessed by the opportunity to share this with you. I pray you were blessed as well. I love how confident Fred Jr. is. Did you notice that? Just like a calm, confident belief in God's Word. And you know, I love how I emphasize the word now because, you know, a couple years ago, my 92-year-old grandma, Grandma Creech, she was in town during Christmas and she never stops preaching. I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> but she told me, she said, Terry Lynn, How's that scripture go about faith being the substance? I said, oh, Grandma, that's my scripture. I said, Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. She said, nope, you missed the whole point. I was like, what? <laughs> she said, you missed the most important word. It starts out with now. Now faith is the substance. It's right now. She said, it's not next week or next year. It's now. She said, you must believe that God is working behind the scenes in your life now. I was like, preach it, Granny. So, <laughs> so you must believe that right now God is working on your dream. Now, the second thing 
that I want to bring up that is so vital is so where you want to go. Your future is in your seed. You know, every time I have an impossible dream, my next thought is I need to get seed in the ground. So where you want to go. If you have a need, sow a seed. See, God can't release what's in his hand until you release what's in yours. For example, when I, you know, wanted to get books published and I named my seed, you know, um, for a publisher, I sowed the biggest seed I'd ever sown into someone whose books changed my life. Well, 11 months later, a literary agent came to me asking to represent me and get my books published. Every seed produces after its own kind. So where you want to go. Here's another example real quick. When I wanted to start a women's conference, I sowed significant seed into Joyce Meyer because she already had a successful women's conference. So where you want to go. Well, now we have the icy women's event renting arenas across the globe. So where you want to go. Now, quick story. When God put a dream in my heart to get serious, you know, about owning offices, to stop renting. Well, I reached out to a friend of mine who had just bought their first offices. And I texted him and I said, hey, what, is your, what are your financial goals for getting it paid off? Well, he texted me back this clear vision of what they were believing for and he supported it with scripture. And it said like phase one, $10,000, phase two, 10,000, and phase three was 30,000. Well, then it said, um, he said, we've completed phase one, so now we're believing God for the remaining 40,000 to be debt free. So in my mind, I was thinking, you know, we're going to sow a big seed. Maybe we'll pay off phase two and send a big seed of $10,000 because that's a lot. But then I heard in prayer, give according to the harvest you're declaring. If you can give more, give more. It only sets you up to receive more. Well, then I heard this in prayer. The Lord said, obey quickly and your harvest won't be delayed. Then I heard this. Prompt obedience produces a prompt harvest. So I'm looking at this text from my friend who needs $40,000. I'm looking over these words from the Lord. So I texted my CFO, Marty, and I said, how much money do we have in that account? He texted me back, (laughs) $40,283.49. I said, send it all. So where you want to go. Now that's pushing yourself in your giving, isn't it? But I know how God operates. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. So where you want to go. Do you know five days later, let me repeat that, less than a week, <laughs> five days later, we, after we sowed our significant seed, we closed on this beautiful three-story office building. I'm telling you right now, prompt obedience produced a prompt harvest. So if you haven't sown seed today, I encourage you to get in on this special anointing of faith and sow where you want to go. Think about what you're believing for. Offices, land, dream house, debt freedom, whatever it is, name it and then sow where you want your life to go because your future, it's in your seed. Let me just tell you, the enemy will never tell you to give. In fact, right now, if you feel like God's telling you to sow for your dream and you're thinking, is it God or is it the devil? It's God. (laughs) Satan will do everything in his power to stop you from being blessed. You know, he knows how the Bible says that giving is what rebukes him. Remember Malachi says giving rebukes the devourer and opens the windows of heaven. He literally hates to see seed sown into good ground. That should just make you want to do it even more, right? You know, that $40,000 could have really helped us with our needs, but it did so much more by turning it into seed. We went from renting to owning because of the significant seed we sowed. So I want to encourage you to name your seed and sow where you want to go today. Maybe God leads you to sow 11-1 based on our theme scripture. All you need to do to give today is click the link in the description or push the donate button. You can call the number on the screen or you can text if you're in the US, just text TSFM event to 28950. And remember in just a little bit, George and Terry Pearsons and myself, we're gonna lay hands on your seed because there is power in prayer. So get ready, get ready, get ready. (laughs) I need my T.D. Jake sweat towel, don't I? (laughs) So I'm telling you, your prompt obedience will produce a prompt harvest. So as you're getting your seed ready, I want to take you into another powerful testimony to build your faith to believe that you are next. Watch this. Hey everyone, 
morning, I'm so excited. I'm sitting in front of our dream home that I never thought it was going to come to pass. We have been trusting and believing God for for quite some time. And then when we heard the message that Cherry gave about sowing and reaping, trusting God in it, we um, chose to step out in faith and God just led us to um, give all that we had from a home-based business that we had sold. It took a while for after we sewed it for it to come to pass. This house was on the market for a little while and the owners decided to drop it additional $70,000 from their asking price, which put it into where we were uh, looking for. And after we prayed about it, we felt like God was just saying, offer them an additional 30,000 less. Our realtor was telling us they are never gonna take it. We stood our ground, we held firm and trusted God in it. And after a while, they decided to take it. And one thing I just wanted to say is that it's all about God's timing, His perfect timing. Don't give up on your dreams, have faith and continue to stand. Well, Sherry, we rejoice with you in getting your new dream home. You know, the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. That means what he's done for Sherry, he will do for you too. Yes. You know, we've received some of the most amazing stories from our partners and friends that were part of the faith building event last year. You know, and I just believe that there are miracles waiting for you as you put your faith into action too. Yes, and I noticed that Sherry said they had been believing God for a long time and it didn't look like anything was changing, but when they sowed their significant seed, things started happening quickly and what looked impossible became reality. Sometimes we can get so stuck in living in only what we can make happen that we limit what God wants to do if we'll just take a step of faith and just trust Him. Yeah, so take a step of faith today. So for where you want to go. What are you believing for? The Bible says that when you give, it will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So I believe as you are sowing today, there is an overflowing harvest that's coming your way. So just simply click the donate button now. If you're watching the replay, there's a donate link in the description. If you're in the U.S., you can text us to uh, TSFM event at 28950 or call us at 877-661-8736. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get back to the teaching. So back to the studio. Okay, get ready to hear from one of my best friends in the whole world, Lisa Osteen Comas. Now, the first time years ago, I had the opportunity to speak at an event with John Maxwell. Y'all know he's my hero, right? I was so nervous. So I texted Lisa and I said, Lisa, you know John Maxwell. Can you give me some advice to not be nervous? She texted me back, Terry, the real you is the most powerful you. <laughs> I said, that sounds just like an Osteen, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's build our faith from my sweet friend and the daughter of John Osteen, Lisa Osteen Comas. Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Osteen Comas and I'm coming to you from Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. And I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of Terry's Faith Building Conference. This is so exciting. I know that every time I listen to Terry speak, my faith is encouraged. And I believe that during this conference, your faith in God is going to increase. I believe God wants to enlarge your vision. He wants to enlarge your dreams. He wants to enlarge your faith. I think about how one time the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, increase our faith. I love that. That's a great prayer to pray. Lord, my desire is to grow in faith. I don't want to stay at the same level. I don't want to become stagnant and accept the status quo. In fact, I really feel like in my spirit that God is saying, don't think small. Some of you are thinking too little, and God is saying, take off the blinders, open your heart to receive from God. He wants to impart new thoughts into you, new vision, new ideas, new creativity. He wants to give you new opportunities and connections. Yes, 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 that is exciting. That is God speaking to you, so receive that today. You know, I came from a family of faith. My parents knew how to live by faith and use their faith when it came to receiving God. Did you know that using your faith is how you receive from God? Faith is putting your trust in God and His Word. Faith is depending on God as your total source. Faith is asking God to help you do 
what you cannot do. And I know I've done this, but we try to accomplish things many times in our own strength, in our own power, forgetting that God wants to help us. He is our source for everything, and He desires to bless us. Every good and perfect thing comes from God above. And my father, he taught me so much about faith, and I could tell you so many stories, but I'm going to tell you this story. My parents founded Lakewood Church in 1959, and it was just this small, rackety, rundown, abandoned feed store for cattle and horses. But they cleaned it up, and they began services with 90 members. And after a few years, we only had under a few, uh, under 200 people or so. And my dad had this dream, though, to reach more people for Jesus. God put it in his heart to build a larger church. And as a young girl, I remember that every service, he would tell the congregation to look to the wall to his right, and he would point and he would say, can you see it? Can you see that big church that God is going to give us? And then he would say to us, let's thank God in advance for a new sanctuary. And we would all shout and thank God like it was already done. I'm sure the visitors thought we were a little bit crazy back then. But you see, my dad didn't have the money, but he had the faith. Now that can preach right there. You may not have the resources you need, but you have the faith to believe for it. You can exercise your own faith for what you need. Hey, listen, don't just pray about it. Do something. Say, God, I believe. God, I believe you for this. You know, our church finally saved up $7,000, which was a lot of money back then, and it's a lot today. But my dad heard about this small Spanish church down the road, down the street, and they needed repairs. And so he just decided to give all that money to them because he, his heart went out to them and he wanted to help them. And it wasn't long until the church saved up more money, but not near enough to build a new church. So one of my dad's friends came to visit and said, John, when are you going to start building? And my dad said, well, we only have a few thousand dollars right now. And this man challenged my dad's faith and said, well, that's enough for a foundation. Start laying the foundation. So my dad's faith was increased, and we laid the foundation. And as the members began to see the vision come to pass, they gave and gave until the new 1,000-seat sanctuary was complete. And did you know we kept growing? Eventually, my dad ended up building an 8,000-seat sanctuary before he went to heaven. And then today, under Joel and Victoria, God has blessed us with a 16,000-seat sanctuary. Only God can make that happen. It began with a dream in my dad's heart and the faith to bring it to pass. You know, I want to point out three things about that one story. First, faith can see it in your spirit before it becomes a reality. You see, my father could see that new church by faith, and he was increasing our faith as we looked to that blank wall and envisioned a new sanctuary. Terry talks about having a vision. It's so important. Secondly, you might need to sow a seed into someone else's life, into their dream or ministry. God blessed us, our little church, in return for the seed that my my dad sowed into that church down the road. The third thing is, you can start taking steps of faith today. My dad was waiting for all the money to come in, but when he built the foundation, God honored his faith and brought the rest of the resources in. So I want to ask you this question. What step of faith can you take today to get you one day closer to the promise, to the dream that God has put in your heart? Just one step, like my father. Can you start making calls? Can you start preparing yourself? Do you know what God's Word says about your situation? James 2.17 tells us, faith without action is dead. And so I'm challenging you today to ask God, Lord, show me my part. I have the faith in you, but if there's a step of faith that I need to take, make it clear to me. I want to move toward the vision. See, when you pray this way, the Holy Spirit inside of you will lead you and speak to you, and you will be astonished at what God can do in your life, just like my mom and dad. I'm so glad you joined us today, and I hope this has stirred up your faith. I believe God is enlarging you. He's increasing you. He's bringing the resources in, and you are going to be astounded at what God is going to do in your life. 
Amen and amen. Well, listen, God bless you, and let's go back to Terry now. Thank you, Lisa. I love hearing stories like that that just mark you for life, don't yeah. they? You know, it's so cool how our fathers used to preach together, and now we get to. I love that. And Lisa, by the way, your bangs look great. She <laughs> she texted me earlier and said, my God, my bangs cut too short. Y'all let Lisa know in the comments, her bangs look great, don't they? <laughs> Okay, you've heard that phrase that if you're the smartest one in your group, you got the wrong group, right? In other words, if you're a big fish in a small pond, <laughs> you're in the wrong pond. Well, we're in the right pond today because I brought a big fish. He's like a tiger shark, and he's gonna help us come up higher in our faith. So would y'all help me welcome this big fish, Dr. Bill Winston. Woo! <laughs> Well, thank you, Terry. I'm so glad to be here. This is going to be a powerful time. I mean, you've got some faith speakers here that'll, I mean, they'll take you where you need to go. <laughs> Let's just say it like that. When I got a hold of faith, it changed my life totally. I knew a person by the name of Charles Caps. He's the one that started me on my way. And just a simple faith teacher. And let me tell you, um, it just changed my life totally. But we'll talk about some of that. So let's pray. And again, Terry, thank you for having me here. This ministry has been such a blessing to me and my ministry. Praise God. Well, let's go into the Word of God. I'll pray first. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for the Word. Thank you for the anointing on me and these lips of clay that I speak this Word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you, think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this Word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force, and that signs, wonders, and miracles shall follow the Word preached. Thank you so much, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to talk about our faith for dominion, faith for dominion. Now, this particular teaching has to do with Genesis chapter 126. Genesis 126. He said this, he said, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Then he says, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, of the cattle, and over all the earth. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I like what one man said. God gave us dominion over creeps. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know whether you know any or not, but you got dominion over them. Hallelujah. And then uh, he goes on up to verse um, 28. And he said, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish this earth and subdue it and have dominion again over this earth and the things of this earth. So these two scriptures here really verify the fact that we are to have dominion. Now, if you don't know what dominion means, then this means very little to you. So let's just talk about what dominion means. One, it has to do with sovereign and supreme rule and authority. Sovereign and supreme rule and authority. Sovereign means basically nobody's bigger than you. <laughs> That's what it means. Sovereign and supreme rule and authority. It means the power to govern and control. The power to govern and control. God is turning over to mankind the power to govern and control. It also means power to direct or dispose of at your pleasure. In other words, if you want to dispose of something in the earth, let's say Jesus, for example, he cursed a fig tree. It's gone, left the earth. Power to direct or dispose of at your pleasure. Now, this word dominion also means rulership. It means authority. It means uh, stewardship. It means ownership. And a lot of times people don't put that last one on there. But I like what one man said. He said this. He says, if Adam had taken ownership, Satan never would have taken over that garden. But there was something Adam had left off in that ownership. I like what he, I like that. Because when you own something, you respond differently. I mean, if, somebody, if somebody's sitting beside me and, and they leave their coat, and they go maybe to, um, to the book table or something, well, they leave their coat there. Somebody else comes and gets their coat and walks off. Uh, well, I don't own it. 
um, you know, uh, you know, I have very little to say about it. I'm not quote quote outraged, but if that's your coat, and somebody comes and grabs your coat, there's a whole different response. So I'm saying that if the saints take ownership over this earth, what's happening in the cities, there's be a totally different response because we own it. No, 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 no. This Bible is about real estate. And so as we look at this and we look at taking this word dominion, we have to really take it and get that definition inside of us so that this not only ownership but stewardship responsibility is there as well. When you have stewardship over something, that means you're watching over somebody else's goods. You're making sure that things work out right in that in that, your job performance or whatever. You're a good steward over something. And you're making sure that things turn out the way they should be. It's kind of a servant kind of mentality, if you will. So we're not only owners, but, there, but stewards as well. God is expecting us to keep this world in order. Somebody said, well, God, what are you going to do about what's happening in the cities? He's going to say this. What are you going to do about it? One day, time I preached a sermon, fix it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fix it. No, 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 no. He's given you through the Holy Spirit all power. He said over in Acts chapter 1 8, you shall receive power. What? <laughs> that, that, that God's ability is at our disposal. Well, we, we've got it, we can fix it. And you're going, well, I really don't know how. No, any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying this that Adam did not take cost him. And it cost humanity. And so as a result of that, Satan comes in. Now Satan takes authority over the earth. You know that because of in Luke chapter 4 and verses 5 through 7, here's Jesus. He takes him up to a high mountain and tempts him. He said, all this has been given to me. <laughs> and I have you bow down and worship me, all shall be yours. Jesus said, get thee behind me. He said, he knew it was lying. That's the first thing. But notice somebody said, well, that really wasn't a temptation. Yes, it was. And he really didn't have, yes, he had authority over all of it. Oh, in Ecclesiastes, read it when you get a chance. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 4. It says it's never, it was better never to be born before the, Jesus came. Why? Because the power was still on the side of the enemy, Satan, still on his side. So now here is things that the thief has come in and taken. Now they've got to come back. Why? Because that's the order God has established. And so now we're coming back, or God starts with a man named Abraham, and he says over in Romans chapter 4, verse 13, to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Praise God. So he started with Abraham. He's going to get this thing back. He really started with Noah. But he's going to get it back. You can't steal from God, <laughs> you know. So here we are, and here's Abraham, and now Abraham has Lot, and he leaves his, his family and so forth up in this country where they're worshiping moon gods and so forth. And he follows the true God, and he, Lot goes with him, but pretty soon Lot was taken captive. Now, Abraham has to go after Lot in Genesis chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. And they took Lot and everything Lot had. But here was Abraham. He, he got a word that they had taken his nephew. And he said, okay. He armed 318 of his own hired servants trained in his own house. You know it had been trained well and trained by the wisdom of God because they went and they took for nations, they, they, they slaughtered them, the Bible says. And when they did that, they brought the goods back. But they not only brought the goods, they brought the people back. So it's interesting what the Psalm chapter 2 and verse 8 says. It says, ask of me, and I'll give you the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Wow. So notice, we're going to get back people, 
We're going to win the loss. And watch this. Get back the real estate. <laughs> we will laugh at the devil. Praise God. Well, you can see that also in First Samuel and First Samuel chapter th- uh, thirty. This is when in, in verses one through three, while David and his men were out fighting a battle, the enemy came, took the women, took the children, took the supplies, took everything. Now, David and his men came back and they started weeping. Their families had gone. Even his men started getting angry with David. But David sought the Lord. What shall I do? God spoke. He said, I want you to pursue. I want you to overtake and without fail, recover all. Now, that's taking back the people and everything that they stole. So I'm saying this faith, how it shows you in these illustrations, how that we as a church are supposed to recover all. Now, a lot of times what if people come and they get faith, but they don't do anything with it. You know, they, they hear faith, sing about faith, you know, preach about faith, but have no faith. <laughs> One man said this. He said, the worst place you can be in life is in a place where you don't have to use any faith. As a believer, that's true. I heard a man say this. He said, if you could come to my house and find anything in it that didn't come by faith, I want it out. (laughs) And that's strong faith. I like that. Now, there's something interesting about this because this is what needs to happen. And this is where I'm going to bring a teaching by our own brother, Jerry Savell. Praise God. This teaching, I was listening to it, and it had to do with seed time and harvest, seed time and harvest. So what happens is that I'm at IBM. Now, I'm saved now and listening to Charles Capps and I'm really getting a lot of teachings on the kingdom of God. And now I'm getting it and now I'm starting to do well in sales. I was in computer sales. And at first, that's what really drew me to get born again. I was I was going downhill. Now I was a fighter pilot and so forth, but I'd gotten out of the military and gotten with IBM, got employed by IBM. And, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I don't think it's anything I can't do. But this sales thing and computer sales, I went to training and I went out on quota and began to try to sell, but nothing would happen. And that drew me to the Lord. That one night I was in my apartment. I said, Lord, would you please help me? He had a lady who was working at the company at IBM take me to a meeting. I got born again, and I started listening to Charles Capps on, on this whole idea of the kingdom of God, and everything changed. Now, as that happened to me, I began to be able to live independent of the system of the world. Now, that's the key that a lot of people haven't done. In other words, this world did not manage my life. See, I'm, 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 the world's under new management now, the church. <laughs> and, and I'm managing this thing instead of it having dominion over me. So they said, well, you know, uh, Brother Bill, uh, the, 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 it just so happens that in Chicago, it's a lot of prejudice and, and they really don't sell to, to black people, you know, like other people, so forth and so on. I, I listened to it, but I had been listening to Charles. <laughs> I had been getting in that Bible and getting that word. And I found that God is no respect of person, that he, he be for me who can then be against me. What did I do? Praise God. I said, all right, start using those principles, sales came in like I don't know what. Now, once they start coming in, I started doubling my salary, tripling my salary. Now, what am I doing? I'm living independent of any obstacles that Satan can put out there to hold me back. Next thing you know, I'm number one downtown in Chicago. Now, that's the power of the gospel. That's the power of faith. So now, once I develop that and learn how to live independent of the system of the world, now God's calling me out of IBM. Now I'm thinking he'll let me stay there because I got plans to move to the top. (laughs) But no, he said, I want you to come out and I want you to preach the word full time. Whoa, man, all this money I'm making so forth. Now I had moved up, I was in management and so forth. So I didn't know how to get out. 
But I heard a man named Dr. Jerry Savelle preach. He preached on seed time and harvest. So I got stuck right there at Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 29 and 30. No man that's left houses, mother, father, sister, brother, and I put IBM for my sake in the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Well, I heard that and something said, repeat that, meditate that. And I began to meditate and meditate and meditate. Next thing I know, on University Avenue in St. Paul, Minnesota, it exploded in me. I called my wife and said, baby, I'm leaving this company. Now, I'd attempted to leave, but I, man, the money came in and so forth. So I said, okay. She said, well, praise the Lord. I left IBM and came to Chicago with $200 and no place to stay. But what that word did, it brought dominion in my life. Now, these are seeds, watermelon seeds. <laughs> but these are seeds. For you to have dominion, you must get dominion seed. You see, I got Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30, seed. No longer did I see myself leaving IBM. I saw myself sowing IBM. I sowed it. But notice, I had to listen to someone that knew the scriptures to teach me so that I could get that dominion. But I needed a dominion seed. So once you get a seed, it will grow inside of you and become a tree. Now, what is a tree? A tree is what you believe. A tree is a producer. So I needed something that would produce dominion over the finances. I mean, I, I needed that tree. Dominion over what was holding me back in IBM. And I got some seed from Jerry Savelle. And I got it. No man that's left house, brother, sister, father, or no woman, for my sake in the gospel, but he shall receive a hundredfold now. Glory to God in this time. Not when I get to heaven, <laughs> but right now. Once that came inside of me, something exploded. I called my wife, said, baby, we're leaving IBM. I'm telling you, left, and look at what has happened. Now, what did I do? I had to go from faith to faith. Faith is your currency. Faith is currency. You can use either money or the thing to get the thing, <laughs> praise God. You, faith, what I'm saying is this, faith is a currency. It is, it, when you have faith, it brings this thing into your hands debt free. You can get enough faith to get it debt free. And this whole idea, I call it the law of possession, that you can possess things that you can see. Once I, well, let me, let me say it like this. I wanna really explain this. So, this idea of faith. Faith is the currency of what you need. Faith also is the title of what you need. Faith also makes the transfer. Glory to God. All right, now get that. Faith is the currency. Faith is the title. And faith makes the transfer. So what happened? God spoke to me, said, I want you to buy that shopping mall. Whoa, you know how big that shopping mall is? What did I do? I took some people, I said, hey, go over there. I said, God is telling me to buy that shopping mall. And they, I said, go check it out and see what you think about it. You know, one of the two of the elders of the church. They went over there and she came back and said, Pastor, we can buy that little part on the east end, right? <laughs> I said, God didn't say east end. He said the whole mall. Whole mall, you know. Come on. I needed some seed. For what? Dominion. So what did he do? I said, Lord, I have no seed. Same thing Abraham said in Genesis 15. I have no seed. So when he tells you to do something, he's got to give you some seed. Now these things are out of reach of what you can do naturally. 
This is something supernatural that he's going to do through you, something that would make people marvel. It'll be a witness that God is with you. And so what did I do? I said, Lord, what is my seed? He said, your seed is over in Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Every place the sole of your feet shall tread upon, that have I given you. Praise God. And he goes on up in verse 5, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And this is 33 acres. And let me tell you, that mall at that time was in deadmalls.com. That's where it was listed. <laughs> but God said, buy it. So what did I do? I started believing God. <laughs> Praise God. One miracle after another. He said, I want you to sow a seed. I said, where? What is sow the seed? I said, yeah. And he told me where to sow it. It happened to be <laughs> to sow it over down in Kenneth Copeland Ministry. I said, okay, I'll sow it. I went to the, to the board of elders. I said, hey, God is telling me to sow this seed. They said, well, what, what size of it? I said, this amount, <laughs> huge. <laughs> he said, Pastor, we need that to buy the property if you're going to buy it. I said, God's telling me to sow it. See, he needed that seed to meet my need. That's the law, part of the law of possession. That seed's got to be in there somewhere. Now, once that happens, and I meditate that word, I begin to see this thing. In other words, he told Joshua in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, see, I've given to your hand Jericho. I begin to see it as mine. Next thing you know, God made the transfer. Now, what am I saying to you? This is your time to go much beyond anything that you can do. This is your time to bring forth something that will make the world see that you, God, is with you. It's your time to be that witness. And we could witness in, in, in all kinds of ways. We can lay hands on the sick and so forth. But this mall, I have got more people say hundreds, thousands of people saved in this shopping mall. Next, I bought one in Tuskegee, Alabama. <laughs> Cash, this is, or this is debt free here. All this is debt free, everything. And now we got grocery stores, we got you name it. This is what we've done. God said, I want you to start Joseph Business School. I said, wow, is that right? I said, what do we do? He said, it'll be a biblical school of entrepreneurship. I said, whoa. So I called two people, I said, hey, can you be with me? I, I need to start a business school. I called Dolores. She had a degree from Harvard. And her husband, Ray, he had an MBA from the University of Chicago. And I, took, I said, God said, go start this, uh, this, uh, this, this business school. I said, you go away and come back and tell me how long it takes to start it. They went back. They came back and said, it's going to take at least one to two years. I said, okay, let me pray about that. I prayed about it. God said, tell them it'll take two months. <laughs> That's faith. You hear what I'm saying? Start a business school. Now it's in five continents of the world. Business school started in two months. Entrepreneurship turned out millionaires. Faith. Faith is a currency. Faith is a title. And faith makes the transfer. Isn't that powerful? So I'm saying to you, faith is what you need. And this faith will have you to do things that are literally impossible with man, but possible with God. And I want to encourage you, don't stop where you are right now. God moves you from faith to faith to faith to faith to faith. You can take your faith and change a city. You can take your faith and have healings in your church that people normally would have to go to the hospital, lay hands on them and get them healed. Your faith. You can have your faith to start a new business. Watch this. And scale it to 500 million within one year. Glory to God. Your faith. That's what Jesus said to them when he stopped the storm. He said, where is your faith? So when you can get seeds, that's the word of God, you can grow trees that will do deeds. And that's what you want. This is my message to you. I want to encourage you. Get back to real estate. I got testimonies of people believing for apartment building came into their hands with faith. 
So God has something for you, something he wants you to do, and this is your time to shine. Praise God. Now, when you told me that, leave IBM, <laughs> oh boy, I'm done shaking, you know. But God said, lo, I'm with you, always, even to the end of the age. He's with us to actually authenticate that he sent us. Isn't that wonderful? So I want to thank you. One, I want to take, thank Jerry, <laughs> Brother Jerry, for all that he's contributed to the body of Christ and uh, Terry for having this great, great meeting. But I want you to really draw from the men and women of God who are giving these testimonies of faith. That's what it's all about. It's about walking by faith and not by sight. My name is Bill Winston, and I approve this message. God bless you. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Bill Winston, for that powerful message. God has called us to have dominion. That's sovereign and supreme rule, authority, power to govern, control, power to dispose and direct at your pleasure, stewardship, ownership. My goodness, there was a lot in that. You know, God has given you that kind of dominion. And, you know, now, just like the Lord told David, it's time for you to pursue overtake and recover all that the enemy has tried to steal from you. Yes, that is so good. He said, faith is your currency. Faith is currency. And when you have faith, it brings what you want into your hands debt free. Yeah. You know, the Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. So we're about yes. to go to Terry and she shares what the Lord's put on her heart, instructed her to teach us that I really want you to get ready for. We've got a couple amazing testimonies that I want to share with you to help build and stir up your faith to see God uh, move in your life. And I want to share this one that Ashley, uh, she reached out and said that God told her and her family to move to Texas. So they stepped out, they sold their house, and they moved into a rent house for what they thought would be just one or two months while they got everything prepared to uh, make the move. And six and a half years later, they were still in that rent house. Wow. Yeah, and so they knew that was not God's best for them. And they partnered uh, with the ministry and they sowed a Hebrews 11 one seed last year just to, to exercise their faith for this move. And then during the faith building event last year, they gave another Hebrews 11 wow. one seed. And then they like, we got to put our faith to action. So they started packing. They started driving to Texas to start looking at new homes and places to work. And this year they moved into their dream home in Texas. Uh, amazing. So, yeah, we rejoice with you, Ashley. That's amazing. And I got one here from Pamela. She's in the Czech Republic. And this story was just wild when I read it. Her landlord actually told her that she had two months to move because they were selling the apartment that she was living in, her and her two sons. Uh, she was already barely making it. Um, the expenses were really tight. And so that week, she gets an email from our ministry inviting her to watch the faith building event. She immediately grabbed hold of the word and decided that she was going to own a home and own it debt free. She didn't know how it was going to happen. She didn't have the money, but she believed it and she partnered with the ministry. One month goes by, nothing happens. Two months go by, nothing happens. Then it was time to move out of her apartment and still they had no place to go. So they moved into a temporary one bedroom place, her and her two kids. And after living there for three days, she gets a call from the owner of her home that she had inquired about a few months prior. And she goes to view the home, she falls in love with it, and she tells the owner that she would love to move in tomorrow, but she doesn't have the money to purchase a home. The owner smiled and he said, I'm not looking for money, I don't need money. I was looking for the right person to give it to. The house is yours. Wow. She was given a home completely debt free. And we have a few photos of Pamela and her kids in the Czech Republic to share with you guys. But isn't that just amazing? We love hearing what God is doing in the lives of our partners. The power of partnership is a very valuable tool that God has created for us. That's right. And so, you know, we encourage you to take a step of faith and align with uh, the ministry. Sow your seed. You can, uh, if you're in the U.S., you can text us. Text TSFM event to 28950. You can click the link to donate. You can call us even 877 661 8736. And so we're just excited to be able to share these with you to build your faith from Pamela and, uh, and Ashley and believe yes. that you're next. So, um, what else? Yeah. Well, we want to remind you, yeah, submit your prayer requests, um, give your financial seed because we are printing them out right this second and we're going to 
put them on the table and our ministry partners who are here with us are going to join our faith with yours. So do that right now. You can click the links on your viewing screen to give and to submit yeah. your prayer request. Well, I know Terry's ready to share a powerful word with you. So I really want you to get your expectancy mm -hmm. up, you know, link your faith with it. So let's go to her and hear this message. your faith has been built up tonight because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? So we said earlier, whoever has your ear also has your faith. Well, that's why we want you to have the free bonus videos with more teaching from our guests and other ministers because I want you to put so much faith in your heart that your faith isn't moved by your circumstances. No, your circumstances move by your faith, right? Now, this is how people with big dreams protect their faith. They guard their ears because <laughs> what you consume, you become, right? What you tune into, you turn into. So be sure to access this free bonus teaching we want you to have. Just click the link and you can get it right now. So I want to share what I've learned from my favorite preacher and favorite dad, Jerry Savelle, on what to do. He calls it between amen and there it is. Or I would say once you make the vision board and then it actually manifests. So five steps. I'm going to go really fast. And just how I've applied these to my dream house, offices, land, real estate, paying off debts. So, of course, I turned it into a little acronym. Imagine that. And it spells faith. So, the F stands for focus on a dream. Now, you might think that I'm the one who came up with the whole, you know, write the vision and <laughs> keep it before your eyes. And no, my dad never had a giant pink pencil. <laughs> but since I was a little girl... He would literally write out what he called a petition. Now, I make vision boards and dream books, but my dad would write out exactly what he was dreaming about and asking God for. Everything from business debts that he owed from Jerry's Paint and Body Shop to furniture, clothes, a better car. My parents were literally in need of everything. But they began to take God's word literally and write the vision for what they needed. And he would have my sister and me sign it, you know, showing that we were in agreement. We could barely even write. But I remember when he, they bought the first house in Fort Worth. It was a miracle. But my parents needed furniture for pretty much every single room. So dad told mom to go to the furniture store and get a vision for everything she desired because we didn't have Pinterest back then. <laughs> so mom went to the furniture store and she would literally price every single piece of furniture. What was she doing? Writing the vision, making it plain. And she would come back, you know, and they would list it all out and then present it to the Lord in prayer. And they would back it up with scripture. They'd say, Lord, you said in John 16, 23, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, my father will grant you whatever you ask in my name. Lord, we're asking you to fill this house with furniture. Then dad would have us all sign it. But I watched God bring it in every single time. Well, that marks you for life, doesn't it? And, you know, my dad always says, you have to see your dream with the eye of faith. So that means you just sit quietly with God and you just imagine. Where do you live? What do you drive? How much money have you saved? How much debt have you paid off? Like, do the homework. Put in the work. How badly do you want to be debt free? How badly do you want the home or the office or the land? Then make it plain. You know, I remember hearing a minister say, if Jesus himself showed up in your living room tonight and just said, how much money do you need to get out of debt? He said, if you can't answer him, you're not serious about getting out of debt. Well, I told my executive team the other day, I said, I want everybody on staff here to know exactly what we're believing for to pay off the headquarters. I said, just in case someone calls and says, how much money do y'all need to be debt free? We're going to say $3,517,277. And I think it's around 89 cents. <laughs> but what is the cost of your dream? Focus on it. Put it in writing today, like right now. Remember, we're going to pray over it in just a few minutes. But here's the thing. Proverbs 23, 7 says, whatever a man thinks in his heart, so shall he become. So what you think about, you bring about. So, hey, put your dream on your phone. It's a toy phone. Most of you will check your phone 10 times an hour, which is 150 times a day. That's a great way to get focused on your dream, isn't it? Okay, the A stands for ask God to favor you. You know, my dad is known for teaching on the favor of God. That is his specialty. 
And he has just ingrained in me how to expect the favor of God. But let me tell you what God's favor on your dreams will do. It gives you an advantage that other people don't have. It opens doors you could never open. It causes you to just stand out. Um, it gives you God-inspired ideas that produce wealth. It restores everything the enemy has stolen from you. This is just to name a few. God's favor makes things happen you could never make happen on your own. In fact, one definition of favor is to endorse. You know, I just wrote a new book on the alone advantage and I asked people to endorse it. And people like Brian Tracy, Les Brown, Ed Milet endorsed my new book, which I'm still kind of freaking out. <laughs> but I just kept praising God for his favor on my life. Well, you typically ask someone to endorse your book who has a lot of influence, a bigger following or an audience. And when they put their name on your book, it just instantly gives credibility, right? Well, did you know that most of you probably would have never heard of this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because the author, Robert Kiyosaki, he couldn't get a publisher at all, so he published it himself, and he sold 48 books, <laughs> like four dozen books. But what happened? Somehow, he got invited on a little show called Oprah Winfrey. She endorsed his book, and it sold 100,000 copies overnight. Now he sold over 26 million copies. Why? just because he got endorsed by someone with a lot of influence. Well, do you know the creator of the universe is about to endorse you? You know, my dad has done thorough research on the favor of God, and he discovered 10 benefits of walking in God's favor that literally will come on your life. And one of them is increasing your assets in the area of real estate. Well, and these 10 benefits are in your free bonus content that you can just download. But let me tell you a story about this real quick. A few years ago, my husband Rodney was driving past a junkyard, and day after day he'd see this junkyard and there was a for sale sign. Well, one day he called the man and someone said that it was for sale for like a million dollars, but it had come down to 700,000. So first of all, I said, Rodney, you're wanting to buy a junkyard the same year I'm writing a book called Declutter Your Way to Success. <laughs> this makes no sense. So my husband, though, he negotiated with this man who was asking for 700000 The man said he'd come down to around 400000 But the favor of God increases your assets in the area of real estate, and you don't pay the world's price for things. We bought a five-acre piece of land originally for $1 million. We paid 289000 That's the favor of God, but that's not all. It still had the junk on it. So we had a company come and crush all the steel. Guess what they paid us? $100,000 for the steel. Wow. So we sold all the stuff, cleared it off. Now it's rented out to a business and it's making money every month. What is that? That's the favor of God increasing your assets in the area of real estate. Now I keep telling Rodney, find another junkyard, please. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the key. Job 22, 28 says, you will also decree a thing and it will be established for you. Then it says, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Why? Because you're decreeing it. So I want you to notice that there's a connection between, between declaring favor and experiencing favor. In other words, his favor is available, but you have to declare it. So which leads to my next point that I learned from my dad. And that is the I stands for, I'm gonna throw you off with this one, invest in some duct tape, <laughs> invest in some duct tape. Now, my dad tells a story of how when he first learned what we're sharing tonight, I mean, he knew nothing about living by faith and believing God for breakthroughs. He had so many questions about faith and Kenneth Copeland was coming to his church in Shreveport, Louisiana. And dad got the opportunity to ask him questions. So he said, Brother Copeland, I've been listening to your tapes for the last three months. Now, back then they had reel to reels and I'm really proud of this prop because it took me some time to find one. <laughs> but he said, I've been listening to your tapes for three months. I've nearly worn them out. He said, I have learned how to live, you know, walk in divine health. He said, I don't have a problem with healing. I got a hold of that promise that I am redeemed from the curse by his stripes I'm healed. Mr. Copeland said, okay, what's your question? He said, my problem is I'm in debt and I'm believing God to get out of debt. He said, I believe that God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, but I don't have a clue how. 
He said, Brother Copeland, how do you talk God into meeting your needs financially? He thought you had to talk him into it. And Mr. Copeland said, they said he laughed and he said, it's not a matter of talking God into meeting your needs. He said, God's already done everything he's going to do about your finances. My dad said, you got to be kidding me. (laughs) But Mr. Copeland grinned and he said, no, the same Jesus who went to the cross for your healing to purchase your healing is the same Jesus who purchased your prosperity. He said, you don't have to talk God into doing anything. He said he did it 2000 years ago. Well, dad said, but I've got all these bills. He said, I've got debts. He said, I'm not afraid to work. I work. But how do you get to a place where God meets your needs? And he said, Mr. Copeland bluntly just looked him in the eyes and he said, Jerry, your biggest problem is your big mouth. (laughs) And then he turned around and walked off. Well, my dad was outraged. He could not believe he had the audacity to tell him his problem was his big mouth. But dad said when he got home that night, he went in his guest bedroom where he had been studying and listening to those tapes. He picked up one of those big reels, walked outside, and he rolled it down the street. And he said, well, here's what I think of you, Mr. Copeland. (laughs) He said he went inside, grabbed another tape to roll down the street, and he heard in his spirit, the Lord said, son, there goes the answer to your problem. Dad said, Lord, did you hear what he said to me? He said, my problem's my big mouth. He said, God, I've been watching my words. I've learned about positive confessions. Why would he say that to me? And dad said he will never forget what the Lord said to him next. He said, I'm about to give you supernatural recall of everything you said since you prayed and asked me to meet your need. Mm -hmm. Dad said, what's supernatural recall? God said, I keep a record, son. He said, everything you said has been recorded. And now I'm going to play back everything that's come out of your mouth since you asked me to meet your need. And dad began to hear words, literally everything from while he was praying, you know, he'd say, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. But then under pressure, when the bills would come and he didn't have the money, he'd say, am I ever going to get out of debt? How will we ever pay this off? Or we're seriously broke. Well, there's, there's a scripture that says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, and that man can't expect to receive anything from the Lord. Dad said that since that day, he discovered one of the best things you can do when you're believing God for a breakthrough is invest in some duct tape. In other words, he said, if you can't speak the word, tape it up, shut it up, zip it up, something, right? <laughs> now, Dad calls it the vocabulary of silence. Put your hand over your mouth every time you feel like talking contrary to God's word. Refuse to let it come out. Bottom line is this. Every miracle you experience in your life is connected to the words of your mouth. Lisa Osteen said her dad said there's a miracle in your mouth. So it's a two-step process. Stop speaking negatively. Start speaking positively. Now that's why we put some of the most powerful scriptures in your free download so you can start speaking them out. Okay, the T stands for, think about your seed more than your need. Now, let me just explain it like this. Um, I'm just telling you what my dad has taught me to become a roadmap out of financial lack and the key to having your biggest dreams. In fact, this right here is what my dad calls the greatest spiritual law he's ever learned. The law of seed time and harvest. Now, Dad says, with faith in your heart and seed in your hand, there's nothing Satan can do to keep your dream from manifesting. With faith in your heart and seed in your hand, there's nothing Satan can do to keep your dream from manifesting. Now, I watched my parents literally give their way out of poverty. You know, Dad would say, when you're experiencing your greatest need, sow your greatest seed. And he would always say this. He got this from Charles Capps. If you're down to your last $1, don't dare spend it, sow it. And he would always compare it to a farmer that, you know, if a farmer was down to his last bit of seed, you know, and he's wanting some carrots, he wouldn't hold on to it. No, he'd get it in the ground as fast as he could. He wouldn't look at the field and just pray for God to give him carrots and fully expect carrots to magically appear without sowing a seed. Well, the whole earth revolves around the principle of seed time and harvest, right? Have a need, sow a seed. Well, that's why we've encouraged you to sow your seed tonight because it's a spiritual law. Well, one time my dad was desperate for some financial breakthroughs in his ministry. And he was flying to Tulsa to preach. 
And he said on the way there, he just started talking to the Lord about some things he was going through. And he said, Lord, we need a financial breakthrough now. And the Lord said, when you get to Tulsa, I want you to give your van to a missionary there. He said, Lord, I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> we desperately need a breakthrough like today. And the Lord said, also, there's five ministers there <laughs> who are on the verge of quitting the ministry. And he said, I want you to give them five of your suits. Give them away. Now, this went on and on. Every time, you know, the Lord would, or dad would talk about his needs, the Lord would start telling him something to give. So my dad said, I'm going to stop talking to you <laughs> about what I'm going through. But when dad got to Tulsa, he did exactly what the Lord told him to do. By the time he even got home, his need was met. Wow. But God was teaching him this powerful principle that we are need-minded, but God is seed-minded. In fact, the Lord said, son, I gave you two gifts in the book of Genesis, authority and seed. In other words, you can determine your own destiny by the seed you sow. Did you hear that? You determine your own destiny by the seed you sow. Galatians 6, 9 says a man's harvest in life depends entirely on the seeds he sows. So the harvest you're experiencing today is a direct result of the seeds you've sown up to now. So every time we have a big financial need here at the ministry, my first thought is sow a seed. In fact, you know, just last month, some of you were with us when um, we had our icing event canceled. <clears throat> Well, we were needing some big breakthroughs and the devil tried to just ruin the whole icing women's event. It was canceled in Washington, D.C. So we decided to make it backfire on him and just turn it into a live stream event. But I decided to sow significant seed first. We had some big needs, so we just decided to sow some big seeds. Well, I was told by my team last week that just last month when we sowed our big seeds, we broke a new record in donations on our website. Isn't that amazing? If you're experiencing your greatest need, sow your greatest seed. And remember, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Always obey instantly so the devil can't talk you out of it, right? Okay, my last point starts with the letter H. And it's having done all to stand, stand. These are things I've learned from my dad. In fact, my dad has said so many times, my name is Jerry, having done all to stand, stand Savelle. <laughs> But you know, just like a record playing in my ear, I can hear my dad shouting, when you feel like giving up the most, that's always an indication your breakthrough is just about to happen. Don't quit. You know, I like what Joseph Lanier said. He said, we will fight until hell freezes over. And then if we have to, we'll fight on the ice. <laughs> in other words, we will not give up, right? Well, dad says, stop focusing on what you're going through Focus on what you're going to. Another Jerry Savelle quote. He says, when you go from how long do I have to wait to how long am I willing to wait, your breakthrough won't take long. Galatians 6, 9, again, says, don't grow weary in well-doing for in due season you will reap if you faint not. I like the passion translation. It says, and don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds for the season of reaping this wonderful harvest that you planted, it is coming. Dad always says, God's working behind the scenes. You know, when a seed is planted, you don't see it growing, but it's working. Yeah. Don't quit. Don't give up. Yeah. Outlast the devil, right? Yeah. So I want to wrap mine up with a quick story about my dream house that will build your faith and how I had to apply what I'm sharing with you tonight. You know, Rodney and I were uh, living in a temporary house for three years. We sold our house three years ago, moved into a rental house, waiting to build the dream home. Well, that's when COVID, the pandemic happened, and we just decided we're not going to build. We're going to believe God for our dream house. Well, that's 36 months of waiting, believing, praying, looking at the vision board before, you know, moving into a dream house. Well, every day we're looking at this dream. In fact, about a year and a half ago, we toured this amazing house and it looked like we were going to buy it. I even told my dad, I said, Dad, this is going to be the biggest favor of God's story I have ever had in my life. Because this man called us and he wanted to trade our land for his house. Like, amazing house, dream house. Well, it didn't happen. He changed his mind. It fell through. He didn't want to do it. That was last March or April. Well, in the natural, we couldn't afford the dream house without selling some of our land. So on July 1st of last year, I just got fed up. 
I put the dream house on the screensaver of my phone so I could see it 150 times a day. Every moment I checked the time on my phone, I saw my dream and I'd speak to it. Well, then I told Rodney, I said, we need to sow like a sacrificial seed for this dream. Something that stretches us. Something that shows God we're serious. Like we're not just tossing money in the offering, the same thing we do every time. No, we need to sow an extravagant seed. I said, the house is extravagant, the seed needs to be. Well, we inhaled, we exhaled, <laughs> we went to the bank. We sowed the biggest seed we have ever sown in our lives on July 1st of last year. I thought surely by August 1st, like a month later, <laughs> our breakthrough is happening. Nothing happened, like not it, not a, nothing. Well, then I thought faith without works is dead. That's my problem. I need to take action. So I ordered my entire master bedroom furniture, new bed, dresser, nightstands. Rodney goes, where are we going to put this stuff? I said, I don't know, but <laughs> I'm taking action, right? Surely God sees my faith. He's going to bring it to pass before I have to store all this somewhere in the house. Nothing happened. <laughs> the guest bedroom was so full of boxes, you couldn't even walk in there. Well, then, you remember November 1st last year, we had my dad, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, they're all here. They're laying hands on our seed, our dream. Rodney and I sowed more seed that day. Um, well, I thought surely by December 31st, after the men of God laid hands, it's going to happen fast. Last day of the year, nothing happened. The new year started. I thought January, February, <laughs> nothing. And then I actually said to Rodney on February 28th, the last day of the month, I said, sometimes it feels like God isn't favoring us with our dream house. Then I caught myself. I wish I'd had some duct tape. <laughs> I said, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for saying that. I bind those words in Jesus' name. I know our breakthrough is on the way. Thank you, Jesus, for our dream home in your perfect timing. And I just started praising God as if it was done. My dad says the depth of your praise determines the magnitude of your breakthrough. The depth of your praise determines the magnitude of your breakthrough. I went to Home Depot, bought some boxes, and just started packing. Three days later, just like Jesus on the third day, <laughs> we literally signed a contract to buy not just any house, the very house that was on my screensaver for a year, the house we couldn't afford without selling land. We bought it without selling land, not for the price he wanted a year ago, nearly 40% less. What am I saying? Having done all to stand, stand for your dream. Keep standing. When you feel like giving up the most, that's always an indication your breakthrough is just about to happen. God's timing is always right. And I want to remind you, because we've talked about sow and seed throughout the event tonight, you can see a pattern with every speaker that you can't have a harvest if you don't sow a seed. But here's something I want to focus on as I wrap it up. Every seed has a gestation period. I just want to throw this out there. If it's taking longer than you thought, it's bigger than you think. God is doing something so big in you, so grand, and it's taking a little time to give birth to this dream. Wait for it. You know, we set a target and we get frustrated because things aren't happening when we think it should, like my house. But every dream, every seed has a gestation period. For example, when we plant a seed for a carrot, do you know it takes about 70 days for a carrot to grow? Well, when the seed for a baby is planted, it takes about 280 days. Now we're usually patient because we know it's going to take about nine months for the baby to grow. Well, I read where an elephant, I just happen to have one, is pregnant for almost two years. The elephant, you know, is so large and it takes a long time for the baby elephant to develop. And elephants only give birth to one baby per pregnancy. Now let's compare this to a dog. A dog, on the other hand, is pregnant for only 63 days. After two months, the mother can give birth to between five and eight puppies. So imagine the elephant and the dog are having a conversation. You didn't know it was a puppet show tonight? <laughs> but let's just pretend they're having a conversation and the dog says, I don't think you're pregnant. I gave birth after two months. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong with you. And the dog goes out and gets pregnant again and again, gives birth every several months. Two years later, the dog comes back to the elephant with 30 puppies and says, now I know you're not pregnant. Look at all these puppies. I've given birth multiple times. 
And the elephant says, no, see, here's the difference. The reason you've given birth so many times and I'm still pregnant is because what I'm carrying, it's not common. It's not usual. It's not ordinary. I'm about to give birth to something so grand, so remarkable, something so out of the ordinary. See, maybe you've seen people pay off their debts, buy their dream houses, get promotions, get married. That's wonderful. Be happy for them. But just know that the dream you're carrying is not common. God is getting you ready for the biggest breakthrough you've ever had. I know for me and Rodney, that extravagant seed that we sowed, it paved the way for us to have the most remarkable, extravagant house harvest we've ever had in our lives. 40% less on our dream house because of God's timing for the harvest. So be patient, wait for it. Having done all to stand, keep standing, right? You know, the Lord said to me in prayer, He said, your faith and obedience to so generously is what produced the dream. So I want to give you one last opportunity to get your seed in the ground for your dream. I'm sowing seed for my big dream to be debt free. Now, if God leads you to sow a seed into this ministry, I want you to know that we don't take that lightly. We honor your precious seed and we pray over it to multiply quickly. According to Amos 9.13, it says, things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. You know, Rodney and I brought seed today, our ministry is sowing seed today. We're pushing ourselves in our giving because we know it sets things in motion for God to bring the breakthrough. So if you feel led to give, click the link in the description or just push the donate button on the screen. You can call the number on the screen or if you're in the US, you prefer to text, text the word TSFM event to 28950. Maybe again, God leads you to sow 11-1 based on our theme scripture. Do whatever God tells you to do, but I would encourage you to get your seed in the ground so we can add our faith and agreement with yours. Here's the bottom line. If you're not willing to give, nothing will help you. If you're willing to give, nothing will stop you. So as you're preparing your seed, I want Isaiah and Cassie to share some details. And I know George and Terry Pearsons are here and they're gonna be joining me in just a second to join their faith with yours. And let me just say, when Terry prays, Fasten your seatbelt. I'll be right back. (laughs) What an amazing message of faith. If you want to get your faith seed in the ground right now, you can simply click the donate button on your viewing screen. Or if you're in the U.S., you can text TSFM event to 28950. You can also call us at 877-661-8736. And our ministry team will answer your call right now while we're live. Yeah. I love what Terry is sharing about. You have an uncommon dream and harvest in your life that's being prepared. And so continue to stand. There is a due season. So today, name the seed that you're sowing and watch God work in your life for your, your home or property, buildings, whatever it is you're believing God for. Just like Terry said, if God leads you to sow a seed into this ministry, know that we do not take it lightly. We honor your precious seed. Uh, we are we will pray over it and pray that there's a quick uh, multiplying harvest coming back to you. Like she said, Amos 9.13, it will happen so fast, your head is going to swim. Yes, we are standing with you. Also, don't forget to access the bonus content yeah. by going to terry.com slash bonus or clicking the link on your screen. But we are so excited because we've heard that Pastor George and Terry Pearsons are here in the studio with us. We're going to have a special time to pray over your giving and your prayer request that you've submitted. In fact, Uh, I just got an update of gifts on our website. We've got Mona from South Africa. She just gave $10. I don't know what time it is there right now. Uh, We have Victor from Malaysia. He gave $1,216. Wow. Larissa from Australia gave $41.70. Anne Marie from the United Kingdom gave eleven dollars and ten cents. Yeah, I want to say June uh, in New York, uh, twenty-five dollars. Pamela in Georgia, a hundred dollars. Abby in Texas, a hundred and fifty dollars. Alicia in Florida, two thousand dollars. And Jedediah in the United Kingdom, five dollars. So thank you for just uh, taking this opportunity to uh, express your faith, take a step of faith, sow your seed, and see what God does in your life. Yep. So back to the studio. Are y'all ready? I've been preparing you all evening for this moment, but would you please welcome my family, George and Terry Pearson. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I'm so honored that you're here. This 
just great. Oh Should my we goodness. put George between two Terry's? Absolutely. <laughs> well, we, we can double team them. Yes. Double and Terry. We're both Terry Lynn's, aren't we? <laughs> yes, we are. Isn't that cute? That is amazing. Spell different, but yes. Wow. And I just want to say this real quick. First of all, I'm honored beyond words that you're here because we know you got a pretty productive schedule. But let's just tell the people how far we go back because I was a rice girl in your wedding. Yeah. Not yeah. to be confused with a spice girl. I was a rice girl. <laughs> <laughs> I gave out the rice at your wedding. Yeah. Me oh, and my wow. sister. And you did such a good job. Look at us. Look, we're yeah. still here. <laughs> Still, still it seemed connected. to work, so thank you for your, your faith and collaboration. <laughs> yes, we collaborated. Isn't that awesome? So I have learned so much from y'all about believing God for bigger things. Dear Lord, your dad taught us, wow. oh my yeah. goodness, how to believe big. Yeah. But also for debt freedom. And I, I have a little prop for you, because I know you like my props, oh, good. don't you? Yeah, sure. So I know. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I know that there's two light bulb moments mm -hmm. that I really want you to expound upon today. Okay. And the first one is how God began to stretch your thinking in the area of believing for something bigger with your house. Mm -hmm. Would y'all just y'all just be free to share however you want? But tell us that first light bulb moment about believing for a bigger house. Oh, like my how did goodness. all that start? Oh, wow. Well, you know, it it started actually when we got married. And we moved into our first little house, and then there was the next house that came, and there was uh, we rented that first house, but which, then which was a faith stretch yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, just believe in God for the right house and the ability to to financially do that. It took my entire paycheck yeah. to pay the rent yeah. on that house, yeah. and then we lived off of his. So. We didn't live big. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And then um, A.W. Vanetta Copeland, her grandparents, yeah. Kenneth's parents, they, they bought a house and they ended up not moving into that house. And we took over the, the mortgage of it. And, and paid, um, paid back his down payment. Exactly. Yeah. So we were paying two payments, okay. which took every dime that we yeah. had <clears throat> to make those double payments. Yeah. So, but the Lord helped us and we were growing in it. Yeah. Everything was, square Progressing. footage was growing, finances were growing some. Yeah. But it still was a big stretch. Yeah. At the time and so, that. you know, more and more children came too. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so we were, we were running out of space and we knew that it was time. And uh, Terry talked to me one day and she asked me a question. And she said, George, what would you think about sewing this house? Mm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think we were sitting on an airplane when I asked you about that, and he, he just kind of went blink, 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 yeah. blink, blink. So but but we was, had it, I had it in my heart we were supposed to do that. Yeah, but I didn't answer her for three years. <laughs> Seriously, it was three years <laughs> yes. before I answered her, and we were back on an airplane again. We were coming back from London, and as we were taking off, I mean, this was so dramatic the way the Lord does this. <laughs> yeah. Talk about illustrations. Yes. We are taking off, and all of a sudden, down in my heart, I sensed the presence of God, and I turned to her. I said, it is time to sow the house. Wow. Yeah. The thing of it was, we were in debt when we had that first conversation. And so our motive to get out of debt was to be able to sow the seed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we weren't going to give a house that had <laughs> exactly. debt on it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so over that period of time, even though we hadn't committed to do it yet, we still were working towards getting out of debt. Yeah. And then when he said to, that mm -hmm. it, it was the right thing to do, we knew what we were supposed to do and who to give it to. Wow. And so we were believing then and we finished paying off the house. <laughs> yep. So that was miraculous. You know, when you, when you live for the kingdom, you know, we weren't thinking about for ourselves get out of debt or even get a bigger house. It wasn't about that. We were just endeavoring to seek first the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. And so sowing that house yeah. was a big part of it. I remember when we went to Kenneth and Gloria. I talked to Gloria first, and then I talked to Kenneth about this. And yeah. I told Gloria, I said, Terry and I are going to sow our house. And Gloria looked at me. She said, all she said, that's a big seed. <laughs> that's all she said. That's a big seed. 
I and think they were concerned we were going to move in. I know. <laughs> that, was, that was it right there. Because they, oh, what are we, we going to do with them? We still owed a little bit on the house, and we didn't have the money to do something else. Yeah. So oh, boy, that was really. he was concerned about that. Yep. So, so I'm sure now that I look back on it, I'm pretty sure they were that's, concerned we were going to move in with them. That's revelation right there. But <laughs> then I, I went to I went to Brother Copeland. And I told him that we were going to sell the house. And he asked me one question. He said, are you and Terry in agreement mm -hmm. together? Wow. I said, absolutely. Yeah. He said, that's all that matters, mm -hmm. is the fact that the two of you are in agreement together. Wow. And what that did was that that launched a journey for us mm -hmm. of debt freedom that we began to step out in. And yes, we cleaned up the house. We made it look good, just like Kenneth does with an airplane. Yeah. He won't give somebody a, a beat up old airplane. No, the man has to put lots of money into that airplane before he gives it and sews it. So it came honestly yeah. that this is what we were to do. And we sewed that house, although we were getting closer and closer to sewing it. And I would, at night, sometimes I, I would go out and drive around the neighborhood because all I could envision was us sleeping in the car. <laughs> really, the car. my faith was not, was not fully developed at that time. Yeah. And I would drive around the neighborhood looking for houses that were for sale, wow. thinking, is it that one, is it that one? And nothing, nothing oh my goodness. seemed to be right. So is, is this then when you went to a Christmas party? Well, yes, we were, yeah. yes, in fact, I think it was, that was, of course, it was Christmas. Yeah. So we went to this party. It was a neighborhood we'd never been in, <clears throat> really across town. Yeah. And so we were, it's a beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. Beautiful neighborhood. We took notice oh that the, so the, the gas station nice. was pretty. Everything oh. in the neighborhood, <laughs> everything was wow. so, that's I've the nicest 7-Eleven like I'd that. ever seen. <laughs> oh, and nice. not, not at all like where we had exhausted every ability out there. But in the meantime, the Lord had done something really wonderful for us and where we still owed money and somebody actually came and had a word for our congregation and they received an offering for us that paid off that house, yeah. left us a, a little bit to look perhaps into getting into yep. the next house. Yeah. So we go to this Christmas party. We hadn't been able to find a house and yeah, tell so, us what happened. <clears throat> okay, so it was, it was Christmas, it's winter. And so I had to pull the car up and drop Terry off in the front of the house, and then I, I parked down the street. So we went to the party, enjoying ourselves, having a great time, and I said, okay, time to go. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go get the car, I'll pull it around. So I walked out the, f the front door, yeah. and uh, as I did, I stood there and I looked at the neighborhood, and I thought, wow, this is really something. And I said, what a beautiful neighborhood. And I said this out loud, but this is too rich for my blood. Where's that duct Where tape? Where is the duct tape? Where is yes. the duct tape? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and, and at that moment, later on, I, I thought this, not at that moment, but later on, I, I really had this vision of the Lord standing there going, I will show you. But here's I'll show the, you. And the reason the Lord was able to continue to work, even though we had this limitation on what we could see ourselves in, yeah. was because I believe, because of living the life to seek the kingdom first. Secondly, our motivation wasn't about ourselves. It was about sowing that seed. Yeah. And so that was working in our behalf, even though our mouth wasn't, up, wasn't, yeah. wasn't fully, like you were saying earlier, like where it should be. But on our um, vision was very limited. Yeah. Yeah. We couldn't see ourselves yeah. out of the area of town that we were in. Right. So the realtor called and said, there's not another house on, for sale in this zip code anywhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going to do. Because we just didn't have a piece. Yeah. And so a friend called and said, you know what? I think you're supposed to venture out. You're not looking in the right place. Mm -hmm. So that we told the realtor, she called back and said, I think of a place that you might be interested in. So we followed the directions, go over to this neighborhood, see this house. It's it's double the house size oh, we were living beautiful. in. It was beautiful. Gorgeous we house. knew it was our house. We yes. went out on the front porch. We're uh. dancing on the front porch. This is our house. <laughs> this is our house. And we looked down the street and we hadn't even realized mm -mm. it was the exact neighborhood wow. where we had stood just four months oh. before and said, this is too rich for our blood. When I was oh, standing at the door, I was looking down the street at, at the that house. house. <laughs> is Whoa. that amazing? 
I know. So the Lord I helped know. us. I mean, even in that, he helped us. But we borrowed money. We were out of debt, yeah. Yeah. but we borrowed money yeah. to get that house, and it took some fancy footwork to be able to do that, and double mortgage and all kinds of stuff. But but the Lord <coughs> blessed us, and we were able to mm-hmm. make the payment. And through all that, we were He was lifting our vision, lifting this neighborhood. Just that environment, yes, yeah. changed yeah. us completely <coughs> from yeah. the inside out. Yeah. yeah, I think that was necessary for us because we didn't see ourselves needing to be out of debt yeah. for ourselves. Yeah. We needed to be out of debt before for somebody else's sake. Right. Mm-hmm. Now we started learning that we needed to be out of debt for the kingdom's sake, for our sake, and here we were in debt again, yeah. pretty significantly. Right. So I'm, you know, I'm studying about getting out of debt yeah. and just uh, endeavoring to press toward that until uh, Brother Copeland asked me to do a series of BVO b- broadcasts with him. And I thought, oh, I've been studying about debt freedom. <laughs> so I thought, I'll go ahead and bring my notes and we'll talk about debt freedom. And, and this will be great. It'll help encourage my faith. A- and so um, uh, actually before that happened, before that happened, we had what was called the, the 30 Days of Glory yeah. at our church, okay. September of 1998. And again, we're, we're pressing towards this, not really pressing, but sort of meandering towards uh, debt freedom and just reading scriptures and so forth about it. So on Saturday, September 12th, 1998, Brother Copeland got up to speak and he started talking about debt freedom. Yeah. I thought, oh, this will be really interesting. And I'm sitting up on the platform watching him. I'm taking notes and he preached about debt freedom and he made two statements that just lit a fire on the inside of me. He said, what one does today for the sake of tomorrow is called an investment. What one does to enjoy today at the expense of tomorrow is called debt. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That's (laughs) what you just said is what I felt on the inside. But then he said this, and then I'll get more response from you. (laughs) Borrowing is a replacement covenant. It's going to someone else when you should have gone to God. Oh. Uh, and I wrote, I wrote in my notebook, and I could probably find that notebook. In big letters, I wrote, ouch. Oh, wow. Ouch. So I really started to dig in to yeah. debt freedom. And okay, now, now to where Brother Copeland asked me to be on the broadcast. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll teach on debt freedom. This will be really good. Yeah. And so I told him, that's the topic we're going to do. He said, oh, that's really good. And... Mm-hmm. It was the Wednesday broadcast. I'll never forget it. You probably know the date and time. It's tattooed right now. I I knew exactly. We're sitting there. We're doing the Wednesday broadcast. And he asked me this question. I'll quote it for you. George, you've heard me preach about living debt-free for as long as you've been around me. Why then? And all of a sudden, the earth stood still. (laughs) There was a, a hush. Yes. And he said, and that, that when he said, why then? It sounded like he said, why then <laughs> did you borrow the money to get into your new house? The, the lady who was behind my camera, like there's a camera right here. Yeah. The lady that was behind the camera went like this. <laughs> <laughs> and all I could think about sitting there, I was saying to myself, this is good for me. This is good for me. This is good for me. That, that was the question that was heard around the world. Yes. People would come to me and say, I remember you on the broadcast. That question. I remember we went, not too long after that, we went to Moscow, went to Rick Rayner's church. Yeah. And we, we got to the hotel. We started unpacking. I turned on the television. No kidding. <laughs> that broadcast was on, except he was asking me the question in Russian. Rum, rum, rum. <laughs> Free. <laughs> and so that day I came home from the, the taping and Terry and I sat down together and we had one of those talks. I wanted to sell the house like right now. I want to stick a for sale sign out front. I want out of this right now. And we had one of those conversations where uh, we talked until it got dark and made some very deep decisions about what to do. But on that broadcast, I was so thankful that Brother Copeland 
I, if you look back at it, which I, I have not, but if you look back <laughs> at it, you'll see that, that he asked me the question. Yeah. And I don't remember what I mumbled. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what came out of my mouth. And I was so thankful that he interrupted me. And he said, your faith was not strong enough or big enough to receive a debt-free house. You had enough faith to give a house. Your faith was not developed enough to receive a debt-free house. It takes time to develop your faith for debt freedom. Wow. So I when said. I did come home and talk to Terry, then we began to accelerate this process of um, getting out of debt. And I remember that he gave me, during the lunch break, on those broadcasts, he gave me my first step to walking in debt freedom. And this is What's so that? important. This, yeah. this launched us. And this will launch any of you or any of you that are watching. He said to me, the moment you make the quality decision to live debt free, God sees you debt free. Love that. What a statement. That's good. The what a statement. The moment you make the quality decision. T.D. Jake says there's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> The moment you make that quality decision yeah. to live debt free, God sees you debt free. In other words, he's working with you. He's like, okay, let's go for this. Let's do this. Yeah. We're going to do, get out of debt. And you, what did you, you mentioned something about it, the quality decision. Well, yeah. sometimes you have to make a quality decision to make a quality decision. Because one of those decisions that's really that rooted that'll hold you steady, yeah. it takes a while to get to that. Yeah. So we, we had to let the Lord bring us a revelation and an understanding yep. of how important that was for us to be debt free. Then we could start building our faith towards that decision. Then once we had the decision made, we built our faith, yeah. fed our faith, spoke our faith, <coughs> sowed by faith yes. yeah. towards yes. that. But we had made a decision. Yeah. There was no going, no going back from it. Yeah. yeah. I and so that. Gloria, later on, she said to me, you're only one decision away from a debt-free life. One that. decision. That's all it takes. No matter where you are, in that place of, of debt, if you owe, you're one decision away from debt freedom. And that's what launched us yeah. into the deeper study. And like Pastor Terry said, we, what we did was we immersed ourselves in the Word. Yeah. I got, I remember back then, I got Leroy Thompson's Money Cometh. Yeah. And I, I bought that series, it was cassettes, and it's like in a giant, <laughs> gigantic, you know, <laughs> series of cassettes. And I listened to those. I listened to Brother Copeland's teaching on the laws of prosperity. Yeah. And at that time, they really didn't have any series or anything about debt freedom, which that came later on. Yeah. And so we did that. We also sowed seed. Mm -hmm. We sowed a lot of seed. We, we walked in a place of patience. And so by that time, then as we were looking for this, this new place to live, um, a home came available. The Lord helped us. You know, Terry, he, he led us he led us, and the leading wasn't always an easy one. Yeah. There were some challenges, a few sacrifices along the way, but all of that process was important. Yeah. It wasn't about just getting to the end of being out of debt and to another house, but the process, and sometimes it was like you were saying earlier, why did it have to wait? Why did it take so long to get out of that house and then into the next one? We had a whole series of we, we moved every 30 days for four months oh. after we, it was, it was a, it was a bear. Every, every 30 days or so until we got into another rent house and it just seemed like a big deal. And then the other house that we got, we told us don't be afraid to remodel. I didn't want to do that. That was a five year project before we yeah. got actually wound up in that house. But I had no idea that it, it seemed like a, a long journey to do that, we paid cash for that house, but then the remodel paid cash for it as we went. And wow. it, was, it was not easy, <clears throat> but here was the thing. Through that whole journey, the Lord was not only teaching us something about faith yeah. and not only being out of debt, but yeah. staying out of debt yeah. this time. So we were out, <clears throat> yeah. we had to stay out. Yeah. But through that process, I learned so much about construction. I learned a lot about um, a lot of things in because it was a massive remodeling. It was not a redecorating. It was a massive remodel, and through all that, now 
as in our position, I oversee the, the construction projects. Mm -hmm. wow. uh, and not, not that I'm the construction manager. Please don't get me wrong well, about that. I think she's cute but in a pink hat. hat. <laughs> I, I do look pretty cute in a yellow hat. <laughs> yes. I have one with my name on oh, it. Cute. And you know what? You could borrow I it. I could sometime. borrow it, yes. yes. <laughs> I could share. Yes. Except mine's yellow. I, I got pink. Okay, yeah, I got the proper. So anyway, <laughs> all that to say, the whole journey, sometimes the journey is at least as important, if not yeah. more so, yeah. than the destination. Yeah. So good. That's right. And so, so the Lord good. taught us a lot of things. This yeah. house that we were renovating, we were doing it with cash. We would, when, when I would get discouraged, then she would build me up. When, I, when she would get discouraged, I would encourage her. Yeah. But we, really, we had to really watch out when both of us got real discouraged. <laughs> we, we had to go see Brother Cope. We had to go see <laughs> yes. Brother Cope. We went to him one day and we were talking about, we, had a, we came to a standstill in the renovation yeah. of the house. And we, we just went to him for some counsel. And I can remember he was in the kitchen. He had his robe on. This was at night. And he was, he was making a sandwich or something. And he said, ah, oh, kids, just roll the care of it over onto the Lord. And then he said this. He said, look at the progress you've made. Look at the progress. Look at this road that you're on right now and see how far you've come. Yeah. And you know something that really did help us mm -hmm. and it, it broke something on the inside because people can get, un they hear this message, they can get under condemnation. Yeah. Oh, I'm in debt. And then they're, they're looking at us but didn't realize that we had to walk this out and it took five years to do it. Yeah. And in the middle of it, we had to stop and look back and say, you know, we made that quality decision mm -hmm. and now we're moving forward and we are making progress. Yeah. And so we finally, we finally wow. moved into that house. We actually, we, we felt like it was livable enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Lord said to me, take possession of the land. Mm. So we just crashed the house. We just went in there. There were doorknobs missing. There were other things that needed to be fixed. But by golly, it's debt free. We are in it. We're in it. <laughs> And we that, took we that took was a the long line. time ago. So we've since gotten doorknobs. We do have doors. <laughs> For a long time everything. there was a, there were a couple of doors you'd have to go <laughs> just like that. Yeah, and it was so strange when we got a doorknob. Um, but let me just share this really quick with the folks. This these are these are this is the beginning debt free strategy that the Lord gave us. Number one, you have to come to the realization it is God's will for me to live debt free. And we had to come to that realization. Faith begins where the will of God is known. In Deuteronomy 28, 12, thou shalt lend to many nations, thou shalt not borrow. So the Lord says, thou shalt not borrow, he will provide and he will help. And the second thing was, we have to realize God is our source. He is our source. We heard it over and over again. Yeah. But the reality of it, God is our source, not people. My God will liberally supply, fill to the full your every need, including the debt according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And it answers the question, where will it come from? Yeah. Where will this happen? Can I interrupt you real quick? Please. I just heard my mom and dad, they were both ministering on Sunday. I was watching them on YouTube. Yeah. But my mom was talking about when they first moved here and how they had no money. But taking one scripture and don't rush through it, yeah. like truly <clears throat> study the scripture. Yeah. My God yeah. shall. Yes supply all my needs. That's what mom and dad would do. Like these scriptures are so powerful. They're so important. You really, really take them to heart, take them personal. So no and matter this, what your vision is, I know your point is vision, yeah. whatever yes. your vision or your dream is, yeah. ours, this debt freedom was yeah. the vision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and the point is whatever the vision is, you take the scriptures that the Lord has given you on it. If you don't have scriptures, you're not, like you said, you're not serious about yeah. it. Yeah. And then um, going back over those word by word, thought by thought, and feeding your faith as well, then let your faith feed your yeah. vision. Love that. But this next one that I had, I'm not limited by a salary. You have to have that revelation. I'm not limited. Yeah. <clears throat> No limits in any way. Mm -hmm. And it was miraculous the way the Lord provided and supplied, but that mm -hmm. came from that quality decision. We are getting out of debt and the Lord goes, let's go. Wow. We can do this. And then this last one here, God has a strategic plan to get us out of debt. Yeah. 
it would take quite a long time for us to go through every detail of what happened, but it was a plan. Yeah. It was a strategic, debt-free plan that the Lord had for us to be able to get to the place where we are right now. And wisdom is the principal thing. Yes. Wisdom, with all you're getting, get wisdom. And he'll show you exactly and precisely what to do. So as you begin to fill up with the Word, just immersing yourself with the tapes you were talking yes, about, yes, then it just yes. caused your vision to get bigger, that yeah. we will be debt-free. Yeah. Like, this is not impossible. Yeah. I, I've shared before with some of our partners how a um, couple years ago when I finally, and I'm the cheerleader of dreams, but I finally gave myself permission to dream of having these offices. Yeah. And, you know, at first I felt like, Big companies come in and buy these things. I'm just this little woman, you know? It sounds like I'm seven, but anyway. <laughs> but I finally put it on the vision board. We're gonna own our offices. Well, not long after, I was in West Palm Beach with the Cranks, David and Nicole. Yeah. Right before the conference started, David said, Terry, I want you to meet this friend of mine. He said, this guy is the real wolf of Wall Street. And I was like, what? And the guy goes, yeah, but I gave my heart to the Lord. I got out of that lifestyle. He said, I'm a completely different man now. And I said, well, what do you do now? And he goes, oh, I'm just an entrepreneur. And David Crank goes, yeah, he's just an entrepreneur. He said, this guy owns 70 Planet Fitness Centers. He owns 30 Smoothie Kings. He owns a candle company, a couple other ventures. Wow. I went back to my hotel room, mm -hmm. looked at my dream of owning offices, and I said, Terry, you only want to own offices? <laughs> like, what else, yeah. you know? <clears throat> just being around someone who was doing well, more. Sure. Yeah. It didn't intimidate me, it inspired me to just come up higher and go, God can do so much more than what I've written down. Why am I limiting That's him? Right. Yeah. So just yeah. hearing these stories, you know, where you might think debt free, give a house away, that should inspire you to go, if God can do it for them, why am I thinking too small? Yeah. This inspires me to yeah. go for something yeah. big, go for something grand. Absolutely. Well, you've got a lot of prayer requests here Look that people this. have sent in and, yes. and to release our faith for debt freedom, yes. for whatever the needs are. Um, are y'all ready? We're ready. We're ready. Terry's got a lot of fire in us today. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that. I was staring at that. That is so yes. good. Oh. I mean, she's unmatchable, okay? She just... <laughs> I'm going to keep it going. But yeah, get us fired up, Terry. <laughs> yes, yes. So people have sent in from all over the world. Wow. Like there's several wow. on one page here. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And the scripture, and this top one, remodeling, debt free, and marriage. There you go. Oh, so, I yep. love that. Well, we've had to believe for some marriage things. You know, if, no marriage. If any married couple ever tells you that they don't have to believe God through some things, well, they they're lie. Yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't tell the truth about it. That's right. I don't know where Notice my scripture is. <laughs> There's a scripture, this one, Matthew 18, 19, we know, says, I say, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. I love the one that says, as touching anything yes, that they shall ask. Yes, yes, So, yeah. Terry, you have such an anointing for prayer. Man, it's kind of like Terry and Terry, I'm the practical, she's the powerful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I would be honored if you would. I would, and it's the Lord's leading here. As I open this one up, I look down. It says, "Prayer for direction," and that's that's really key. Ephesians one uh, seventeen through twenty three. It says, "I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that He would grant unto you the spirit of wisdom, revelation, insight." into mysteries and secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of you. He has a plan for you. And he has a plan to get you out of debt and he will lead you that way. We were talking earlier that the Lord didn't jerk the children of Israel out of Egypt. He led, led them. them out. He yes. led them through the wilderness and he led them to the promised land. Yes. Then he led them in conquering the land. And the Bible tells us in Romans that, uh, in Romans 8, 14, that the sons of God are led 
by the Spirit of God. He will even lead you into the wisdom that you need. So I'm going to pray, yes. and that's the way we're going to pray. So set your faith, as Pastor George already <coughs> said, wisdom yes. is the principal thing. Mm. What does that mean? Wisdom is the foundation and the foundational thing. You seek wisdom, not the vision. Seek the wisdom of God, yeah. and He will <coughs> not only give you, but some of you may be asking God to give you yeah. vision. Yeah. So you, you, you set yourself, He will give you wisdom yeah. on how to take, He'll take you and lead you to you have that vision He has yeah. in His heart right. for you to have in your heart. Father, in the name Thank you. of yes. Jesus, Lord, we come to the throne. Lord, that is the throne of vision. It's the, the throne of supply. It's the throne of the Holy Spirit. It's the throne. Father, you are the all-seeing and the all-knowing God, but you have not kept yourself from us, but you have given yourself to us. And so we ask, Lord, for the wisdom, the direction, the counsel, the enlightenment necessary for each and every request that's represented here today today. And even those who are watching that do not send that request in, but, but they've, they've been inspired. Their vision has been sparked. Their hopes have been stirred as they've listened all through this meeting. That I pray for them. I lift them to you in that name of Jesus because it's the will of God. You said, I have a plan for you. I have a vision for you. I have a way to get you from where you are to where I want you to be. So I pray in the name of Jesus that your plan be formed in them, that your plan, their, your purpose for each and every life and Thank what you, you want them to do, what you want them to be, Thank what you want them to have, that in the name of Jesus, Praise the eyes of their understanding are flooded with light, mm -hmm. flooded with light. So according to your word, they will see and then they will know. They will see every step to see it and to know it to see it and to know it, and that you cause the favor of God, you lead them in the steps of righteousness, and that, that those steps are in the, the favor of God, making provision, and I thank you, sir, they will see you. what you see for them, and they will say Praise what God. they see. Praise Glory Jesus. to thank God, you. in Jesus, Jesus' name, thank you, amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> amen. You know, the Lord ministered something to me about Wisdom is the principal thing. With all that getting, get wisdom. Yeah. And there was a point in time where I would say a lot, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And the Lord told me, he said, stop saying that and say this, I have the wisdom of God. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what to do. I love he that. stored up wisdom yes. for the righteous yeah. so they know what to do. Yes, and one key I wanna wrap it up with is when Kenneth Copeland Ministries had the $6 million TV bill. Mm -hmm. You said you would bring the staff together yeah. every morning yeah. and do what? We praised God. We thanked Him. All that month of December, when we hit the highest point of the $6 million deficit. Yeah. It took doesn't the sound like much now, but <clears throat> this back in the... <laughs> The late 80s, and it was a it was, lot. It was a lot. Yeah. Yeah. a lot of money now. Yeah. It was a Whole whale lot. of a lot of money to yeah. us then. They told us it'd take two years yeah. to, to uh, recover from that. Wow. And so you would bring the staff yeah. to just praise God, we we even praise though you God. had some debt. Every morning. <laughs> Every morning. Every and, morning. And as I told you before, they were telling us it, it would be 18 months to two years before we would get out of that situation. Yeah. It was six months and it was over. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise is a weapon. Acceleration. Yes. So thank God for yes. what you asked for. Thank yes. God the prayer we prayed today, we prayed it by faith. I yeah. did. Yes. They did. Yep. Yes. Did so you? And you can go to that Ephesians 1 prayer and thank God every day. I That's prayed right. it every day. The God of my Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, would grant to me that spirit of wisdom to know the hope of his calling to yeah. and the and the yeah. enlightenment it says for the the and to understand the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints yeah. now we'll say this and then I'll, I'll turn it back to you we set ourselves in agreement yes. this facility 
yes. is paid That's right. in this. full right yes. now. Yes. Father, yes. in the yes. name of grab, Jesus, grab we chair. thank you. Yeah, <laughs> table, yes. floor. We'll grab chair. Yes, yes. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, you, we come into agreement say, together for this facility. Facility, you are debt free in the name of Jesus. You are paid for. You paid, are paid, finished, for. furnished, full, free that's in right. Jesus' that's name. Right. We receive you, it. Lord. We believe it. You, we take it right Thank now. You, and for everyone you, who has sown into this, that's we are right. agreeing Thank together you, for the hundredfold return. It's working on their behalf. You are supplying all of their need according to your riches and glory. And thank you, Lord, that you are multiplying seed sown, debt free, free from the world system and moving forward in your kingdom. That's right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Yay. Amen. Thank you. It's important that you sow into the place where revelation came, where hope came, yes. where faith came. Yeah, yeah. You sow into that. So if you haven't sown into this meeting, into to Terry's project here, well, we encourage you to. We brought a seed. Oh so. my goodness. Yeah. But we're sowing into you. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't out give a giver, right? <laughs> well, in the words of my favorite preacher, Jerry Savelle, the depth of your praise determines the oh, magnitude of your breakthrough. That's right. So that's just right. keep praising God. And I want to say thank you, special thank you to our guest ministers, you, to every person who was a part of the event. We had so many amazing ministers, didn't we? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastors George and Terry. Thank and you. I love you both so much. I want you to know that. I'm we the cutest you. rice girl you, you ever had, <laughs> me and my sister. We appreciate what the Lord has given you to stir up vision. Uh, um, I'm working on the vision board for Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Oh my goodness! And it's it's about this big. I would so, imagine, yes. The vision wall. Two walls worth. And <laughs> but it's because of what you've brought and what you've taught. Thank you, Jesus. We needed, we needed a vision board. I love it. Because there's so much. I love it. The practical and the powerful, see? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just so proud of you for spelling your name right. It's I know, a... I know. I'm sorry, I bought the website though, oh. before you could. Terry.com. <laughs> <laughs> so we can keep going, that. right? No, but I want to say thank you to all of our team who helped put all this on. Right, what? Sure. Excellent, Great right? Job. And thank you for investing time with us tonight to build your faith. I can't wait to get your testimony and get ready because there's a miracle in your seed and there's a miracle in your mouth. So go get some duct tape if you have to. But remember, we love you and we are cheering you on to live your dreams. <laughs> Gotta have a little confetti.